Live from the Maverick Center in West Valley City, it's Utah Grizzlies hockey. As tonight's last of a three-game series between the Grizzlies and the Idaho Steelheads. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. As it's the final game of the season series between the Grizzlies and Steelheads. That's right, the 18th and final meeting. Utah has a record of 4-12-1 and against Idaho. But don't worry, the rest of the league's had trouble with the Steelheads as well. As Idaho is just two games, two victories away from setting a league record for wins in a single season. They have 55 victories. The league record is 56, set by the Louisiana Ice Gators back in the 2001-02 season. Well, it's a festive atmosphere here at Maverick Center as there's four games left in the regular season. Utah will be at Maverick Center for all four games. And I'm really looking forward to seeing four players who were picked up by the Grizzlies earlier this week who are making their Maverick Center debut we all know about Luke Martin. He was with the Grizzlies last year, and he was one half of the best defensive pairing in the league along with Charles Edward Nastu. Martin scored a big goal with 110 left in regulation on Wednesday night to tie the score at two. Utah ended up losing in overtime 3-2. to two. The Steelheads scored 20 seconds into overtime as Ty Pelton Vice picked up the game winner. Last night, the Grizzlies had a 1-0 lead after the Roosters scored 10-40 into the contest and stayed a one nothing game until A.J. White scored shorthanded 7.33 into the third period. And then the game winner was scored by Wade Murphy with about three and a half minutes left in regulation. And Idaho held on to the 2-1 to one lead as they came away with the their 32nd home victory of the season. The 32 home wins is the new league record that was previously set by the Cincinnati Cyclones back in the 2018-2019 season. So we're really excited to see Luke Martin back. He's wearing number 44. He's got L. Martin on the back of his jersey. As this season, Bryce Martin's a member of the Grizzlies. No relation between the two. Luke, the St. Louis native, and Bryce Martin's from somewhere in Canada. And Martin will be a scratch for the Grizzlies tonight. But we'll also see three players making their Maverick Center debuts. Obviously, Martin making his season Maverick Center debut, but he was with the club last season. We'll see the Maverick Center debuts for... Nolan Ritchie, as well as Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner. All three of those players are making their Maverick Center debuts. I'm really looking forward to seeing Kyle May May Mayhew, not Kyle Mayfield, the Grizzlies fan, but Kyle Mayhew, who has displayed outstanding speed in the first two games as a Grizzly, and he showed some great speed in warm-ups. Really looking forward to seeing Mick Messmer, the Merrimack product. He'll be wearing number 25, and Nolan Ritchie, who was the captain of the Brandon Wheat Kings earlier this season. He was more than a point a game in the WHL over the last two years, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to bring to the table as it should be a fun matchup here between the Grizzlies and the Stillheads. We've got a good goaltending matchup. Garrett Metcalf will get the start for Utah, and he'll be going up against Dylan Wells. Wells got the start on Wednesday. Garrett Metcalf is making his first appearance since February 20th against the Orlando Solar Bears. So it should be a lot of fun. It looks like a great crowd is filing in here to Maverick Center. And we got all the action right here on Flow Sports and YouTube. Your homes for Grizzlies hockey all season long. If you're in the West Valley area, come on down and enjoy some Grizzlies hockey with us as this is a huge game with playoff implications as Grizzlies are tied for fourth place in the Mountain Division with Kansas City and Rapid City. When we come back, we'll talk with Guy Krenzel. We'll go over the playoff picture. We'll talk about the guys making their Maverick Center debuts. And we'll also go over the optimum first goal of the game as to who's going to score first for the Grizzlies this evening. And remember, Utah has scored first in each of the first two games of the series. It's the last game of the season series between the Grizzlies and the Stillheads. It's the last game of the two-city three-game set. And we'll come back and talk with Guy in two minutes as we're in business on a Saturday night. And you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network presented by Rio Tinto Canacon. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Crenza. It's a big game with playoff implications of the Grizzlies. Are tied for fourth in the Mountain Division with 68 standings points with Kansas City and Rapid City. Guy, four games left in the regular season. They're all going to be here at Maverick Center. Utah's got to find a way to, to protect home ice. They're a 500 club here at home, and they're going to need at least two victories out of these last four games to give themselves a chance at the playoffs. There's no place like home, Tyson, and the Maverick Center, one of the best arenas in the ECHL. But one of the reasons that is because it's got the best fans in the entire league. Grizz Mania has been in full force all season long. And tonight, looks like we're going to have a packed crowd. They're all going to be getting loud for the Utah Grizzlies here tonight. And Grizzlies are going to need to rally behind this great crowd. They're going to need to go and take care of business here on home ice. Garrett Metcalf gets the start, and Eddie hasn't started in a game since February 20th in Orlando. Hopefully uh, there's not too much rust. He's looked good in practice over the last couple weeks. And you know he's ready for this opportunity against the high-powered stillheads. Well, for Garrett Metcalf, when you haven't played in a while, it's going to be tough to try and get back into that rhythm of just a high-paced game, especially a rivalry game between the Grizzlies and the Steelheads. And I thought one thing the Grizzlies did really well on Friday night uh, was the defense in front of Trent Miner played really well. Yes, Miner had a fantastic game, but the defense really was helping him out, making a lot of those shots easy for him to save shots from the perimeter and stuff like that. So... It's got to be the same thing here tonight for Garrett Metcalf and then some. they got to have uh, you know, a good defensive presence in front of him so he can kind of ease his way into this game and settle in. And then after that, I think Garrett's going to have a good game. I know both you and I are really excited to see Luke Martin back in a Grizzlies uniform here at Maverick Center. He was outstanding last year, and he looked pretty good in the two games over in Boise. He scored that big goal with 110 left in regulation on Wednesday that got the Grizzlies a standing point. He looks good on Friday as well. But I'm really looking forward as well to seeing the three newest Grizzlies. Kyle Mayhew's got outstanding speed. I'm really looking forward to seeing Mick Messner. And I think that there's some high hopes for Nolan Ritchie. And I really like the forward line that Ritchie's on tonight as he's paired up with the rooster Jordan Martell and Cameron Wright. I think that three-man unit's got a lot of potential. You and me both, Tyson. I'm really excited to come and watch these young guys play. And really, I think that the Grizzlies' success for the remainder of the season and into the playoffs is going to depend on how well these young players play we saw that last year in the Grizzlies' run to the Western Conference Final. These new additions that they signed out of college, they performed great, and the Grizzlies made on a deep playoff run. So these guys are going to have to step up, and uh, it's the biggest stage here at the Maverick Center. They're going to have the Grizz Maniacs cheering them on. I think they're going to have a good performance tonight, all three of them. You know, we haven't seen many power plays in this series. Uh, I think both teams only had one power play on Wednesday. I know had three power plays on Friday, and the Grizzlies had one power play in 22 seconds of another at the end of regulation last night. It's the same referee, John Lindner, that officiated both games on Wednesday and Friday. He's back here tonight. And so I wonder if he's going to let him play once again or if he's going to call it a little bit more tightly than he did the first two games of the set. Well, his mentality, Tyson, through the first two games from what we've seen, it seems like he just wants to let them play. You add the fact that the Idaho Steelheads are a pretty disciplined team to that. I think we're not going to see a whole lot of special teams in this game. But for the Grizzlies, it's when you get that chance on the power play, you might only have one or two cracks at it throughout the course of this game. When you go on the power play, you're going to have to find a way to make the Steelheads pay. Uh, you've got to be on point in your special teams game tonight. Idaho is in the top five in both power play percentage and penalty kill rate. So they're an outstanding special teams unit. They did score a shorthanded goal in the third period last night. The Grizzlies have allowed 13 shorthanded goals, which is time for the most in the league. 
And so I think the Grizzlies would be okay for a game where both teams just kind of duke it out on the ice and there isn't many power plays either way. Yeah, I think that's exactly what the Grizzlies might want. I mean, the power play has been struggling, and you never want to go on the penalty kill against a power play unit like the Steelheads have. And the Grizzlies, through the last few series, have shown that they are capable of scoring five-on-five. So for the Grizzlies, it might just be best to just duke it out five-on-five and find a way to beat the Steelheads at even strength. Who's your pick for the Optum first goal of the game tonight? Well, Tyson, we've been talking about these new guys, and I love to talk them up. Tonight, I'm going to go with Nolan Ritchie. I thought he looked very strong in his first game with the Grizzlies. And you mentioned that line that he's on with Wright and Martell. There's nobody on this team that's harder than Jordan Martell. And Cameron Wright's been filing into that center role quite nicely. I'm going to go with Nolan Ritchie and the assists go to Wright and Martell. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go with the Rooster for the third straight game. Now, Martell on Wednesday scored the game's first goal 10-43 into the first period. Last night, he scored 10-40 into the first period. So I think 10 minutes and 37 seconds into the first period, Jordan Martell scores from the left circle. I got the Roosters scoring a goal for the eighth straight game as Martell has been unbelievable for the Grizzlies. He's on a current, what is it, six, maybe seven game goal scoring streak right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's it's just hard to keep track. He's yeah, we're losing like, track. He's just been that good and so offensively proficient. But, I mean, over his last nine games, he's got nine goals and five assists. And he's really turned it on. And I'm sure the Fort Wayne comments are looking at Jordan Martel's stat line and saying, oh, boy, we made a mistake. Could have been and ours. No disrespect to Neil Robinson, the player that went to Fort Wayne in that trade. But Jordan Martel has just been uh, – he's been phenomenal ever since he came over to Utah. And uh, that's exactly what the Grizzlies needed. And credit to Coach Brian Kanasiewicz and Coach Jared Pike for just making that trade and knowing what they were getting. He's been great. The Rooster does have a goal in six straight games. When we come back in 30 seconds, we'll give you the starting lineups. And Guy and I will face off here in about 10 minutes from now as we see Grizzlies and the Stillheads coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. Welcome to the Maverick Center. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. Let's get to the starting lines for both teams. First, for the visiting Idaho Stillheads, who have a record of 55, 10, 1, and 2. They have 113 standings points, and they are just two wins away from breaking the league franchise, the league record. Not just a franchise record, the league record for the most wins in a single regular season. Starting in net is Dylan Wells. He'll be making his second appearance in a Stillheads uniform. He appeared on Wednesday night and got the victory. He stopped all but two. He's got a 1.99 goals against average and 9.39 save percentage. His backup is Adam Scheel. Starting defensive pairing, Nolan Hedrick, who has 14 goals and 37 assists in 57 games. Hedrick has a plus 34 rating. He'll be paired up with Patrick Kubla, who's a plus 32 this season. Kubla, eight goals and 40 assists in 55 games. So Hedrick and Kudla are the starting defensive pairing. One notable defenseman who's out of the lineup, Matt Register, is a scratch. I believe it's a healthy scratch as he's just getting some rest for the stretch run. Register is a plus 53 this season. Starting forwards, Wade Murphy, who scored the game winner in last night's contest about 16 and a half minutes into the third period. Murphy's got 19 goals and 21 assists in 51 games. Ty Pelton Bice was Wednesday night's hero for Idaho. He's got 19 goals and 25 assists in 40 games. And Jordan Kawaguchi, who last night was named the Stillheads team MVP, he's got 52 points in 56 games, 26 goals and 26 assists. The forwards that are out of the lineup include the captain, A.J. White, Jack Becker, Colton Keller, and Giannis Vandenberg. It's Idaho going with 16 skaters, 10 forwards, and six defensemen. Starting lineup for the Utah Grizzlies, who have an even 500 winning percentage and a record of 32, 32, and 4. They're an even 16 and 16 at home. Starting in net is the Salt Lake City native, Garrett Metcalf, who's appeared in 13 games this season. He's got a record of 7, 3, and 1 with a 3.95 goals against average and 888 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing, James Shearer, the former Brandon Wheat King product who played at the University of Calgary. 
Sure, has five goals and 17 assists in 50 games. Luke Martin gets a loud applause from the Maverick Center crowd as he makes his return. Martin sporting a mustache. And in 27 games in this league, he's got nine goals and 17 assists. He played with the Jacksonville Icemen earlier this season, had 25 points in 25 games. He's got a plus four rating, and he has a goal in four of his last five ECHL games. So Sure and Luke Martin are the starting defensive pairing. Starting forwards, Terran Pfizer, who leads the club with 25 goals this season. He'll be in there as well as the Ironman, Tyler Penner, who's appeared in every game for the Grizzlies since the start of the 2021 22 season. Brandon Cutler, the former Victoria Royal, is also in there for the Grizzlies. He'll be starting at one forward. He's got 13 goals and 13 assists in 28 games. The starting forwards, once again, are Pfizer, Penner, and Cutler. Starting defensive pairing is Shearer and Luke Martin. Scratchers for the Grizzlies tonight. Connor McDonald is out. The Grizzlies captain. It's not a serious injury or a season ender. He's just out of the lineup. Johnny Walker probably out for the season. Bryson Martin's out, as well as Zach Sekos, Dakota Raby, Christian Simeone's out of the lineup, Cam Strong, and Victor Bartley. So quite a few scratches for the Grizzlies this evening. When we come back in two minutes, we'll have face off here at Maverick Center. It's a good Saturday night. Crowds filed in here as it's the Grizzlies and the Stillheads coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Expectations here will always remain high, and we'll continue to find a way. put together a lot of good games you know
Great night for Hodges. Two big standings points are on the line tonight as the Utah Grizzlies host the Idaho Steelheads. For the last of a three-game, two-city series and the 18th and final meeting between these clubs. I think the Grizzlies are kind of glad to not play Idaho after tonight as the Steelheads have either broken league records or on the verge of breaking league records. They lead the league in goals per game. They also lead the league in the fewest goals allowed. So Idaho has been an unbelievable team this year, an historically good regular season for the Steelheads. And for the Grizzlies, they battled hard on Wednesday night, getting a standings point and a 3-2 loss. And then last night, Utah had a 1-0 lead for the majority of the game before A.J. White scored shorthanded seven and a half minutes into the third period. And then Wade Murphy kind of stuck one past Trent Miner for the game winner. The guy, the Grizzlies, on Wednesday and Friday really held strong against a good Steelheads team on the road. Yeah, they did, Tyson. And you think about, I mean, you talked about it before, how the Steelheads have come close to breaking a lot of records. And if they haven't broken them already, they're pretty darn close. So this is a really talented hockey team. And the Grizzlies went toe-to-toe with them. Uh, and so I think that speaks volumes about this Grizzlies team. I mean, the Grizzlies did everything but win, really. Yeah. I mean, there were aspects in those games where the Grizzlies just dominated. And you only get one out of the four standing points in Idaho. So tonight here for the Grizzlies, it's critical that they make a statement against their biggest rivals and pick up a win. It'll be big for Garrett Metcalf to get some saves early, some routine saves, since he hasn't played a game since February 20th. Yeah, I mean, for Garrett Metcalf, it's just the defense needs to make it easy on him. They need to find a way to help him out. I mean, you can try and simulate real game action and practice all you want, but it becomes nothing close to the actual action of a real game. So for Garrett, it's just try and find a way to settle into the game. For the Grizzlies defense, just help him out a little bit. I think if Garrett finds a few shots early on, he'll find a way to ease himself into this game, and it'll be just fine. Dylan Wells gets the start for the Idaho Steelheads. He appeared in one NHL game earlier this season as a member of the Chicago Blackhawks. He played in 17 games with Rockford in the AHL, played in three games with Texas in the AHL, and he struggled with Texas, and that's partly why he's here with Idaho right now. And I think if you're the Grizzlies, you want to pepper him with some shots early. It looked like he was a little bit shaky at times. Yeah, that's got to be the memo from the Grizzlies coaching staff is take shots, shots, and even more shots. Throughout the last couple of months, something that the Grizzlies have done really good at is taking a lot of shots. And as a result of that, there's been an uptick in scoring, and the Grizzlies' record has improved as of as well. So for the Grizzlies, fire them on net. One of them's got to squeak through. The Victoria Royals connection of Brandon Cutler and Terran Pfizer in the starting lineup, as well as the Ironman, Tyler Penner. And it is great to see Luke Martin back in a Grizzlies uniform paired up with James Shearer. And watch out for Idaho. We've got three dominant forward lines. Ty Pelton Vice will be out there. And it looks like he's going to take the face off. Wade Murphy and Jordan Kawaguchi, the starting forward, starting defensive pairing is Patrick Kubla and Owen Hedrick. Idaho resting their two veterans and Matt Register and A.J. White. Jack Becker also out of the lineup. As looks like we're about set for hockey here on a Saturday night. It's going to be a fun one. Last four games of the regular season will be here at Maverick Center, and Guy and I are looking forward to calling all the action. John Lindner's referee. The linesmen are Craig Peterson and Andrew Collins. The puck is dropped and we're underway. Grizzlies win the faceoff. They're in the black jerseys with white numbers and professional green trim. Idaho wearing white tonight as Luke Martin throws out to center ice. It's taken away by Bice, who gains the center red line and dumps it in. Puck bounced off the near the near corner, rolls towards Metcalf. Sure, there's a Matt towards the far side. Now a couple in the left point. Fires left, he shot, uh, redirected by Penner's stick. As still at center it, but kicks off to Cutler as he battles with Murphy. Now Cutler gets the puck, and he'll skate out to center ice. He crosses the red line. He'll tap it off the far boards. He gets around Cutler, or he gets around Cudlup as Cutler over towards Pfizer on the left side. Pfizer skates towards the point. Now gets it across to Cutler. Cutler over to the right side, throws it between his legs for Shearer. Shearer centers out in front of Penner, but getting a stick in the way is put, tie Pelton Bice as he goes towards Patrick Kudlup as the Steelhead skate from left to right here in the first period. The Grizzlies from right to left as both teams make their first line change of the game as we're about 55 seconds into the contest. Still no score. No one's taken a shot yet. Over to Owen Hedrick. He'll get to new try, so move it ahead. Pass connects to Justin Ducharme. Ducharme to the right circle to get back in. Shot, he scores! And just like that, one shot in. The seats aren't even warm here at Maverick Center and the Steelheads have drawn first blood. It's Justin Ducharme. Skated towards the right side. Boy, it didn't get up. It didn't get down. It just got through Garrett Metcalf as he left a little bit of room over there in the front post, and Ducharme put it away. Well, what a burst of speed there by Ducharme. Really just drives to the net and really a good backhand shot. 
for Metcalf, we talked about getting reps. Might be a little too deep in his net there. But there's still plenty of time to come back in this game. I'm sure he'll settle in. I know. Leads one nothing as Ducharme gets the goal with the assist to Hedrick and Kudla. As Grizzlies gain center ice, Nolan Ritchie in his first shift at Maverick Center dumps it in. And he sees where number 61 He's paired up with the Rooster and Cameron Wright. As Damowski enters from the right side, they'll throw it to the right side to bounce off of the stick of Justin Mesiak, the cousin of former Grizzly Ryan Mesiak, as battle along the near corner. Cameron Wright over there along with Mayhew. Ido centers out in front. It bounced off the stick of, of Mesiak and goes back towards Cameron Wright. Martel delivers a hit on Cody Hayskin, who had two goals on Wednesday. Puck goes back towards the left side, and it kicks. Oh, looked like it stayed in the zone, but it looked like uh, Ido uh, dumped it to the corner. It looked like it exited the zone, but it stayed in. Mayhew crosses center ice left wing. He'll step over the blue line. He looks to start the fits. He glances off the skate of Casey Johnson, number 13. It goes to Zane Franklin. Franklin wearing number 37, crosses center ice, and he dumps it in. He gets around Jamison as Mayhew throws it across to Corey Thomas, number three, the former stillhead. He gets hit by Willie Neerham as he goes back to Nick Kanadi. He's in the right point. He'll skate towards his left. He'll tap it off the end boards. Metcalf drifts it towards the near side as Franklin gets the puck in the left corner as he's being shadowed by Thomas. He'll beat it back up top as Kamatsi takes a shot that's blocked by... Mick Messner. Messner comes off the ice after his first shift at Maverick Center as Franklin to the right side gets to the offensive line and dumps it in. And still come off the ice. There's a puck over in the right corner. It's taken by Cutler, who will feed a pass across to Pfizer. Pfizer gets out to center ice, but Kamatsis moves it ahead to Zach Walker. We'll skate back to the Idaho blue line. Idaho leads 1 0, two and a half minutes in. As Cutler gets that center ice, he picked off a pass. As Luke Martin glides it across to Shearer. Shearer back to Martin, who skates down the middle. He's now at neutral ice. He crosses the center ice logo, and he'll chip it to his left for Tyler Penner, who gets to the left point and dumps it in. Dylan Wells behind his net, wearing number one. will get it to a defenseman. As Idaho skating from left to right gets it. As Zach Walker crosses the center ice, he'll chip it over to Bice. He dumps it in, does Bice. Puck lines towards the left side. Now back around, Jared Power chasing after it. Power played last night, but didn't on Wednesday. Power gets the puck. The Mount Royal product will dump it in. Pouncey playing four tonight, chases after it. He'll tap it off the skate of Patrick Cutler, and it goes back to the Stillheads. Zach Walker crosses center ice with speed. He loses the puck. Martin moves ahead, but it goes to Cutler, who crosses center ice. Now that back to Zach Walker, who skates around the center ice logo. He'll throw it back to Ducharme, the goal scorer, over to Hedrick. Now he moves ahead to Ty Pelton Bice, who taps it in as he was in Grizzlies territory, and a puck flew towards Metcalf. Puck to power the center ice. He'll dump it in as the Grizzlies make a line change. And it looked like we have a whistle blow. And it looks like the Grizzlies are calling for ice because they say power didn't gain center ice before dumping it in. Tough break for that unit. They're going to have to stay on the ice. And I know Jared Power is tired because he kind of just threw his head back and was like, oh, come on. <laughs> but he's going to have to stay out there. And I really think Jared Power has settled in nice with this Grizzlies team. I think he's going to shape up to be a pretty good pro. Just underway here at Maverick Center. Idaho leads 1-0 as Justin Ducharme scored 104 in with Hedrick and Cutla getting the assist. Draws in the Grizzlies zone on the far side. As Utah wins the draw, Mayhew gets it around to throw. Back to Power. He will lift it in the air. It's batted at center ice. Pounce and chases after it. Casey Johnson gets there first. He'll move it to Ducharme at center ice. who dumps it in. Grizzlies get that line change in. As though lose the puck in the right corner. Wade Murphy centers it out in front. Shot saved by Metcalf. As Murphy found Mesiak out in front. Now the puck goes to the left side. Idaho couldn't keep it in. The Rooster moves it ahead. Uh, looked like Richie couldn't reach it as well. Battles with Richie behind the net. Puck goes to the near side as Idaho will tap it towards Franklin. He gets knocked down by Thomas. As a still edge, Justin Ducharme skates towards the left side, take a shot on a bounce off the end boards and hits the side of the net. Ducharme chips out to Franklin, it goes past him, and it goes to center ice. As Kamatsi throws it towards Kanadi, back to Franklin. Now it goes to Richie, moves ahead to right. Cameron Wright gains the offensive line, he'll skate towards the left circle. He fires a shot, saved by Wells. As Wright fired it just out in front of the crease, and after the whistle, Nick Kanadi pushes Jordan Martel. As Wright was to the left side, kind of looked like Wright was looking for a shot, but he was also looking for the rooster cutting in front of the net to redirect it. Yeah, almost looked like Cameron Wright was trying to shoot low there and trying to get a rebound out in front for the rooster to cash in. I like the idea from Cameron Wright. He's been a little quiet recently. I'd like to see him uh, get back on the score sheet and a good look for him there. Looks like Martel made slight contact there, and Zane Franklin says, look, pal, you may have scored a goal in six straight games. If you stay away from our goaltender. Well, it wouldn't be Grizzly Steelheads without some tomfoolery after the whistle, would it, Tyson? 
No, nah, that's more like the Rapid City series. <laughs> it seems like it's kind of clean when the Grizzlies play the Steelheads. Idaho near the bottom of the league in penalty minutes this season. They put the net back in place as Idaho leads 1 0. Steelheads have taken two shots. Grizzlies have taken one. Tyler Penner will take the draw. The second year Grizzly, who played his college hockey at Colgate University. Steelheads win the draw. They skate from left to right here. Brian Damowski's in the house. He'll turn the puck over. Penner drops off for Pfizer. He'll take a righty shot. It goes wide. It bounced off the end boards. Pfizer around the net. He'll chip it over to Penner up top for Martin. He's to the left side. Martin will skate towards his right. He'll fire towards the net. I got redirected by the stick of Zane Franklin, who's sporting a beard. As Cutler to the left side, skates towards the point. Cutler stops. He'll fire towards the net. I got redirected by a stick. Wells will cover up. Good crafty play there as the Grizzlies had the puck in the left point and just fired it towards the net, looking for a redirection. Yeah, that was a really good shift from the Cutler line, Tyson. I really like the energy that they were moving with. But the most important thing was that they had possession in the Idaho zone. It seemed like for the first three or four minutes of this first period, all the action was in the Grizzlies zone. It seems like the momentum has shifted and the Grizzlies are starting to capitalize on it. And still filing in here. It's a good Saturday night crowd. Charge. Jameson will take the draw. Fitz is out there along with Mayhew and McMessner as draw one by the Grizzlies. Fitz with a shot. He scores! Dylan Fitz gets his 17th of the year and we're tied at one. Fitz high fives everybody on the Grizzlies bench and Dylan Wells acted as if he didn't even see the puck. He, acted, he reacted very late to it as Fitz gets his 17th of the year. What a sneaky shot from Dylan Fitz, Tyson. There's no way Wells sees this. He doesn't even react to this shot. And Fitz just does a great job of just spinning away from the defender and just firing it on net. The best thing you can do is take shots. Any shot's a good shot. And for Dylan Fitz, that one just has eyes and finds the back of the net. I think with Jamison battling Ty Pelton Bice, I think both guys had the angle of Dylan Fitz. Grizzlies win the draw and dump it in. We're tied at one. Crowd's going crazy here at Maverick Center. As Dylan Fitz... Scores the goal. Idaho crosses center ice. They dump it into the offensive zone as Willie Neerham will chip it around for Kawaguchi. He'll get to the right side for Hedrick. Hedrick back to Kawaguchi on the near goal line. He looks to center it. Couldn't reach it to Ty Pelton by. Says Fitz will clear it out to center as Puck goes back over to Owen Hedrick. He's in the stillhead zone. He'll get it across the bice. He'll move it ahead to Kawaguchi. It taps off his stick. Kawaguchi collides with Corey Thomas. Now the puck back to Kawaguchi. He loses. Nick Messner moves it ahead. The rooster crosses center ice. He gains the line as he drifts over to the right. Right looks for Semek out in front. It goes wide. Semek back after missing two straight games. The Arizona State product. He was a college teammate with Kumatsi of Idaho. As puck goes back to center ice. As Semek glides it across to Ritchie. He will drive it back, but it hits off of Neerum's stick and goes back to Metcalf. As Semek glides it across to Ritchie, who skates down the middle. Ritchie gets around Misiak. Now he's at center ice. Ritchie's got good speed. He'll enter the offensive zone. He'll throw it to the left side. He'll get his own pass. He'll toss it to uh, Martell. He gets hit by Walker, so Martell couldn't get the puck. As Ducharme loses it, Grizzlies will tap it off the end boards. Martell chases after it, but Haskin gets there first. As he'll tap it off of Richie. Richie across to Martell. He skates towards the right side. He'll take a right shot. He scores! Brewster gets his 17th of the year, and Utah's taking a 2-1 lead. That's Unbelievable. Seven, that's seven straight games for the Rooster scoring a goal. Cockle doodle doo. The Rooster crows again. Who else? Who else would it be? You give Jordan Martell that shot, and he's not going to miss his favorite shot at the top of the circle. Once again, the puck is in the back of the net. Just seems to have eyes. He was wide open on the right side. What a response from the Grizzlies. Martell with a goal in seven straight games. Getting the assist is Nolan Ritchie, who gets his first professional point. Time of goal, 6.43 into the contest. The Grizzlies score a goals two minutes and 27 seconds apart. One minute, 27 seconds apart. Idaho wins the draw. They dump it in as Mayhew gets blasted by Franklin. Puck along the near side. Mayhew gets it. And he'll toss it across to Luke Martin. Martin. Moves it ahead. Now goes to Penner. Rink wide pass the next. Brandon Cutler to the left point. Gets hit by Kanadi. He loses his balance. Puck goes back to center ice. Mayhew gets hit by Franklin. Now the puck goes back over towards Franklin. Pfizer gets hit. Play starting to get physical here at Maverick Center. Kanadi over to Franklin. He loses it. Mayhew moves ahead to Cutler. Pass was behind him. Now goes to Franklin, who taps it off Luke Martin and dumps it in as... Luke Martin gets the puck on the far side. Utah leads 2-1. They scored goals a minute, 27 seconds apart. 
Martin over to Pfizer. Pfizer steps over the line. He'll ski towards the right circle. Take a shot. On a glance off the Hedrick stick and flies out of play. Dylan Fitz scored 516 in and 643 into the contest. Jordan Martell gets his 17th of the year. He now has a goal in seven straight games. We'll come back in one minute as Utah leads 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Utah leads 1-0 as Idaho scored 104 in. But Dylan Fitz is the opt-in first goal of the game score. 5-16 in in a minute and 27 seconds later. The Rooster gets his 17th of the year. Utah's outshot Idaho 5-2 as the draws give me in the far circle of the Stillhead zone. Utah wins it. Though so we'll throw it to the far side as getting pushed is Mick Messner. He's getting pushed by Hedrick as Idaho playing physical here tonight. As Cudlow loses balance, Grizzlies get over to Jamison. He's to the right side. Jamison snares with a fifth shot, saved by Wells. As Jamison skates towards the near corner, back towards Fitz, but Idaho pokes it from him as Niram gets to the center ice for Kawaguchi. Fitz delivers a hit on Niram as Idaho dumps it in from neutral ice. It sure gets pushed by Kawaguchi. Puck glides towards the far side. As Cudlow gets dragged down. Now Jamison in the far corner of his own zone. Throws it across. Idaho Owen Hedrick gets it. He fakes the shot now. He'll take a righty shot. Oh, he centers it to Mesiak out in front. Mesiak with a shot and hits the side of the net. As Hedrick fought, uh, faked two shots there. Mesiak around Utah's net. He'll get to the left side for Cudlow, who's dancing around with Messner. Now back to near him in the left side. He'll get it up top for Hedrick. He'll take a righty shot and it's blocked by the stick of Dylan Fitz. As Messner wins a one on one battle in the corner with Cudlow. Though flips it high into the air. It's gloved at center ice by Domowski, who drives it back in. Metcalf stays in net as it floats over to the right side. As Mesiak skates towards the court center circle, drops off for Domowski. Shot saved by Metcalf. Grizzlies get it. Nolan Ritchie crosses center ice. He'll dump it in. Ritchie looks like he's got outstanding speed. As the puck goes to the far side, Johnson gets hit by Martell. Johnson gets the puck back. He'll throw it back to the right points. Picked off by Semic. Semic with a lefty shot and it goes wide as Nolan Ritchie. Throws it back to the corner for the Rooster. Martell glides up top for Thomas. He'll tap it off the end boards. Wells tried to cover up and didn't. Nolan Ritchie will tap it to the left side. Thomas with a one-timer and it goes wide. Thomas looking for his first as a pro. Semic over to Ritchie. Picked up an assist on the Martell. Goalie battles with Johnson. Puck lines towards the near corner. Wright chases after it. It's taken by Idaho and Ryan Domowski. Domowski and Wright. Those guys have had some battles this season. As the puck goes back towards the end boards, Wright couldn't locate it. Idaho gets it. He'll chip it to the far side for Ducharme, the Idaho goal scorer. He'll throw it to Domowski on the right side. He'll tap it in as the Stillheads make a line change as Kyle Mayhew chases after it. Mayhew skates down the middle. He gets around Walker, but Walker took the puck away. Walker throws it up top for Jade Miller. Now he'll drop it off as Kamatsi skates towards the left circle. He'll drive it across and bounce off the of Cutler and glides towards the right point. As Kanadi throws it to Kamatsi, who was a college teammate of Semic and Johnny Walker's. Now to Kanadi, right side shot. A stick saved by Metcalf, and the puck gets off the protective netting. 9.56 left in the first. Utah leads 2-1. Well, some really good saves for Garrett Metcalf in that last sequence, Tyson. I mean, he gives up the goal on the first shot of the game, but I really feel like ever since then, he's really settled into this game. And so far, he's been he's played great after that. Draws game in the nearest circle. Metcalf to stop the last four he has seen after allowing a goal 104 in. Looks like we got a good Saturday night crowd filing in here. Attendance is up by about 1,000 per game. As Jade Miller will take the draw against, well, I can't see the linesman's in the way. I think that's, I think that's Penner. <laughs> Taking yep. the draw. <laughs> the challenges of calling a game live and in person. <laughs> As Penner's kicked out of the face-off circle. Cutler will take the draw. I'll take live hockey over anything any day. As 
I know wins the drive, except for maybe baseball. Kimatsis will skate towards the right around Penner. I dr- tried to wrap around in front of Metcalf. Metcalf kicks it away. Frank guns to the right side, spins along the boards. Luke Martin chases after. Kamatsis and Martin collide. Luke Martin throws it towards Penner, or lifts it into the air. Kanadi bats it as Grizzlies clear it out to center. Hand pass is called by the linesman, and the draw is going to come back to neutralize. Well, one guy, Tyson, I think that really needs to have a solid game is Jacob Semek. He's playing in his 10th pro game, missed the last two games. Connor McDonald out of the lineup with an injury today. McDonald's a big part of the blue line for the Grizzlies. He's the captain of this team, solid defensively. Stevens is going to need to help out Metcalf. Semek's going to need to have a good game here today. Grizzlies are pretty deep on the defensive unit and obviously spots are at a premium. Draw one by the Stillheads. Nick Kennedy will enter from the right side. He'll take a lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf, and the puck flies out of play as it hit off the protective netting as it was on its way for section 124. But, I mean, Tyson, how about the response from the Grizzlies? Yeah. I mean, it's tough. You give up the first shot, first goal of the game on the first shot. But ever, I mean, after that, the Grizzlies really rallied. And to put it home the next two, I think this just shows that this, there's no quit in this Grizzlies team. And the Grizzlies early on have gotten production from all three forward lines. Ron's going to be on the right side. Jade Miller will take it against Keaton Jamison. Miller played for South Carolina last year. South Carolina struggled last season, but they've had a bounce-back season. Draw one by the Grizzlies as Aaron Tho will throw it to the far side as Dylan Fitz wearing an A on his sweater will gain center ice and chip it ahead to Jamison. Jamison skates down the middle. He'll glide towards a corner. Jamison gets hit pretty hard by Zach Walker. He hit him so hard, Walker lost his helmet. He'll skate towards the bench. Grizzlies skate around the net. Mick Messner battling. As Kamatsis cuts him off as Franklin drives it ahead. Kawaguchi gets it one-on-one. Kawaguchi skates towards the right circle. They have a lefty shot, and it goes wide. As the puck lands off a stanch on the far side, glides to Jamison in the slot. Jamison crosses center ice. No backhanded deep in the stillhead zone as Utah makes a line change. 8.53 and counting left in the first. Utah leads 2-1. to one. As Idaho, Ty Pelton binds over to Kawaguchi, who gets around Mayhew. And the Grizzlies poke it back towards center ice. Martel gets it. The Rooster skates into the offensive zone. He skates towards the left circle. Pablo drags him down. Richie throws it across. Martin couldn't reach it. Now Luke Martin throws it back to the corner. It's picked off. As Owen Hedrick will glide it across to Kalaguchi, who gains center ice. He'll chip it to his right from Pelton Bice. Bice throws it across as it goes towards Murphy. He couldn't reach it. As Martin back to Cameron Wright, who skates back to the corner. Murphy took it away from him. Now to the high slot. Pelton Bice with a one-timer, and it goes wide. As Cameron Wright will tap it off the far boards, goes to Cutler, or make that Cudlup. Prandrick Cudlup, wearing number 47, he enters the zone, but the whistle blows as Idaho's offside with 8-10 left in the first. I'm really impressed with the game that Nolan Ritchie has had so far, Tyson. I mean, he moves with a ton of speed, but, man, is he a playmaker. He makes very yeah. smart decisions with the puck. I mean, even, if, even if it's just getting a little bit of a tip of his stick on the puck just to poke it away from the player, I mean, he just makes really great plays, really good at reading things. I'm impressed so far. Richie averaged exactly one point a game in the WHL over a five-year career. As Idaho wins the draw at new choice, and they'll dump it in. Brandon Cutler will drift it across to Pfizer. Pass goes tape to tape. Pfizer crosses center ice. gets poked away by Johnson. Though takes uh, throw takes it, and they'll dump it in. As Idaho skates towards the near side, Demowski battles with Shearer. Cutler in the area as well. So he'll feed it back to the corner that he vacated. Johnson and Cutler gets held up by Haskin in. As Penner trying to dig it out. As it's... Held up along the end boards. Penner gets pushed by Johnson. And taking the puck is Justin Misiak, who did not play last night. He'll tap it off the far glass. It goes to Tho. Gets the puck on his side at the Utah blue line. He'll tap it ahead. It goes back to Tho. As Ducharme got a stick in the way. Tho across to Sure, who will drive it off the near boards. It goes to Cutler. Back to Pfizer. He drops off for Cutler in the left point. He'll take a lefty shot. Love saved by Wells as he caught the low liner with 7.18 left in the first. Oh, Wells is lucky that he got a glove on that and was able to put an end to that because Cutler shot that low because he saw Penner driving to the net. Similar play that we saw against Wichita where Cutler kind of just throws the puck off the goaltender and Penner comes streaking in and picks up the loose change. It's a dangerous play. I like what Brandon Cutler did on that play. Thomas and Semek are the defensive pairing. Kyle Pouncey is playing forward once again tonight. Cameron Wright and Jared Power. We're out there for Utah as Jade Miller will take the draw for Idaho. Utah leads 2-1, to 7-18 left in the first. Both teams have taken six shots. Wright hasn't taken a ton of face-offs this season, but he's taken a ton of face-offs here this week. As the draw won by Idaho, as Zane Franklin gets around Thomas, he'll drift it to his left for near him, trying to get it back to Franklin did near him, and the pass is by the mark as it goes deep in the Grizzlies zone. Thomas hits, gets hit by Franklin. As the last shook a little bit, 
Franklin left side. Righty shot saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Idaho. Skeets around Utah's net. As Jade Miller gets pinned by Semek. As goes to Willie Nurem, who's got good size. Nurem battles with Corey Thomas. Right took it, uh, or yeah, Cameron Wright took it away from him. We get a whistle, and it looks like the hook's going to be called, and we're going to get a penalty. Who's it going to be on? Looks like it's going to be Willie Nurem who's going to skate towards the penalty box. Nurem gets two minutes for hooking, and the Grizz is going to be on the power play for the first time tonight. Have you or someone you know been charged with a DUI? Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious, and you need great attorneys on your first line. Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw away or disregard this letter. Call and get Utah's number one DUI defense team, Rogers and Russell. Utah on the power play for the first time tonight. They lined it up top from Martin. Now to Cutler on the left side. I think a lefty shot saved by Wells. As right will throw it back to the far corner. Miser spins it around. Jamison chases after it. And Zach Walker in the area. Over to Hayskinen who clears it out. As Metcalf plays it in front of his crease. He'll tap it over to Luke Martin. Less than six and a half minutes left in the first period as Luke Martin skates around Utah's net. Martin skates down the middle, being shadowed by Jane Mill- Jade Miller. Over to Pfizer, across to Cutler, who gains center ice. Cutler from the left side steps over the blue line. He'll drop it off for Jamison. Now back up top for Martin, who gets the bouncing puck. He'll skate towards his right. He'll take a right. He shot like a redirected by Cutler. Stick and goes wide. Jamison from the near corner glides it towards Wells. He gets poked away, and Johnson will clear it all the way towards Metcalf. Both teams will make a line change. 106 and counting left in Utah's power play. Martin still on the ice. He'll get to Martel. Now Martin comes off. Martel skates down the middle, and Idaho pokes it out of the zone. Could try to carry it back in, but the Grizzlies are offside. Halfway through Utah's first power play of the game, and 549 left in the first. That was very, very close on that blue line. May or may not have been an offside, but it seems like the line's been caught with that eagle eye. I think one thing the Grizzlies have done so well on this power play so far is their zone entries. See if they can get back at it here. Draws give me near the Idaho bench. Nolan Ritchie taking the draw, wearing number 61. He was a center with the Brandon Wheat Kings. He was one of two captains for the Wheat Kings this season. As he wore the C, draw one by the Grizzlies. Mayhew gets over to Shearer. Back to Mayhew at neutral. So throw it to his left for Martell. The Rooster gets around Nolan Ritchie. Now enters the zone and drops it off for Ritchie, wearing number 61. Ritchie glides towards the corner. Now beat it up top for Shearer. He glides it across to Mayhew. Mayhew skates towards his left. He'll feed it to the right side for Ritchie. Back to Mayhew. Over to Ritchie. Ritchie. Over to Shearer. Back to Ritchie. Ritchie gets it across to the Rooster. It's picked off by Hedrick. Hedrick will throw a left wing pass to Domowski. Domowski skates towards the left circle. They go lefty. Shot that goes wide. As the puck glides towards the near circle, Richie will chip it back to Shearer. Both guys used to play for the Brandon Wheat Kings, but played at separate times. They were never teammates and until now. As Richie will cross center ice, he'll drop it off for the Rooster. Ten seconds left in the power play. Martel gains the line. He'll skate toward the left circle. Martel's already got a goal tonight. He'll glide it over to Mayhew. Mayhew over to the right side for Tho. Tho dancing around. As he skates towards the high slot, they get shot and it's blocked. Tho gets it back over to the Rooster. Walker hits Martel as Richie battles with Haskinen. Walker delivers a hit on Fitz. Idaho gets the puck as Casey Johnson will throw a right wing pass to Walker. Gains center ice. Walker glides towards the right side, fires a shot. Metcalf gets it and kicks it towards the far corner. Idaho spins it around to Kanadi as he's on the right side near the boards. He'll get it to Walker, gets pinned in the corner. Four minutes, 20 seconds left in the first. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Puck glides towards Metcalf along the near goal line, and he'll cover up as the puck ended up from the corner over to Metcalf. And as he stops play with 4.16 left in the first, time out on the ice will be back in one minute. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Stillheads 1. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto Canacons. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account.
Utah leads 2-1, 416 left in the first period. Guy, what did you see from that Grizzlies power play? Well, I like the puck movement from the Grizzlies on that power play, Tyson. They just weren't able to score on that, but I really feel like if they get more reps on the power play, then eventually the power play will break through. you got a lot of guys coming onto that unit and a lot of new members of this team on that power play. Saw Richie out there, so it's just going to take some time, but I like what I've seen so far. Draw on the near circle. Willie Neerham, or make that Justin Misiak, will take it against... Oh, we thought it was going to be Tyler Penner. Penner's kicked out of the circle. Brandon Cutler will take the draw. Justin Mesiak, the Michigan Tech product. As linesman Craig Peterson now talking with Cutler. Make that Andrew Collins, number 49, the linesman. Craig Peterson's the other linesman. And as Grizzlies win the draw, puck in the near corner of Utah's zone. They skate from right to left during the first period as Penner will lift it over the head of Nick Canati. And the linesman, Andrew Collins, raises his right arm and says, Ice is on the Grizzlies. 404 left in the first. This place is loud, Tyson. I mean, you, everybody listening can probably tell that it's a loud building in the area. It looks like we got a really solid crowd here tonight. And so far, the Grizzlies have been feeding off of that energy, done a really nice job rallying back after allowing the first goal. And they've carried the momentum of this crowd. They've done wonders with it ever since. Yeah, high top section 114. We got just about a full section. As the draw won by Utah, and Idaho takes it away. They skate around Utah's net. Martin, a brick wall, cuts off Misiak's pursuit as it goes towards the far side. As Idaho, left side, gets it over to Murphy. It'll tap it over to the corner. Misiak fires around Utah's net as Ducharme kicks over to the left side. Misiak, one-timer, goes wide. Now to the right side, battles with Cutler as Cutler will nudge it ahead, but fanned on it. Now it glides towards Pfizer, gets it across the Penner. Penner from the left wing, steps over the blue line as he's falling down, gets it to Cutler. Cutler with a lefty shot, and it kicks off at Dylan Wells and flies out of play. 3.30's left in the first, and the Grizzlies will have an offensive zone draw. Brandon Cutler's due for a goal, Tyson. He is absolutely due. He was scoreless this series in the first two games in Idaho, but he has been jumping and he's been moving with a purpose so far in this game. Had some really nice looks. I think it's only a matter of time before he gets that goal. If he joined us late, Idaho scored 104 in as Ducharme picked up a goal, and then Dylan Fitz tied it up 5-16 in, and the Rooster scored to make it 2-1, 643 into the contest with Nolan Ritchie getting his first professional point as he got an assist on the Martel goal. As a draw, one by the Grizzlies. Thomas across the Semic. What timer? And it goes wide. The Semic had a blast in the right wing. As Fitz loses the puck, Zane Franklin, two on two, across the center ice over to Domowski. Back towards Franklin, Thomas with a great defensive play. He pokes it back to center ice. Play's been physical here in the first period as Messner loses it at the Utah at the Idaho blue line. As Idaho back in their own end, skating from left to right. As Patrick Cublis skates down the middle. He'll throw it to Hedrick. Hedrick's at neutral ice, so cross center. Hedrick gets around Dylan Fitz. Now he steps over the blue line. Hedrick loses the puck as he tried to get around Keaton Jamison. Thomas over to Messner. He fumbles the puck as Domowski pokes it to Franklin. Now to Hedrick on the right side as he skates and bounces Semic off the boards. Hedrick behind Utah's net loses it to the far corner for Fitz, who lifts it high into the air as P Cutler lets it go past him. No icing as the Grizzlies make a line change. 237 and counting left in the first. As Franklin loses it for Richie, who moves it ahead. It goes past right over to the Rooster. Rooster gets it poked out to center ice. Kawaguchi. Steps over the blue line. Richie cuts him off. Good defensive play by Richie. He's trying to take it away from Kawaguchi as there's a scrum in the near corner or in the near boards, just about halfway from the point to the corner in the Grizzly zone. As near him, has it go past him out to Neutrice. He's going to dump it back in. Miners stay, or Metcalf stays in net. Miners a backup this evening as Metcalf playing for the first time since February 20th. As the Rooster skates to the left side, Martell. We'll drop it off for right. Right try to kick it back to the rooster in the slot. Nido intercepts it as near him gets to Johnson. Johnson crosses center ice. He'll step over the line as he gets around James Shearer. And as over in the corner, Mayhew gets hit by Johnson. As Idaho feeds up top, but the rooster picks it off and throws it back to the corner that everybody vacated. Mayhew and Johnson. Mayhew drags down Johnson. But Mayhew's not very big, but it looks like he plays a physical game. Richie gets over towards right, who couldn't reach it. Nearham re-enters from the right side near the boards. Mayhew tripped up near him. It's a good call. Shearer touches up the puck. Mayhew, as he was falling down, tripped up. Willie Nearham. And for the first time tonight, Idaho's going to go on the power play. As Kyle Mayhew gets two minutes for tripping with 1.27 left in the first. 
Oh boy, Tyson, you mentioned that Kyle Mayhew's not the biggest guy, 5'8", 160 pounds, but going up against Casey Johnson, 6'2", 200, he absolutely plastered him in the far corner. I absolutely love what Mayhew's done so far. Draws give it over in the far circle. Idaho's power play this season is 23.2%. The Grizzlies' penalty kill is an even 79% this season. Idaho has a top five power play and top five penalty kill unit in the league. Mayhew gets two minutes for tripping. Time of penalty, 18.33 into the first. During the first intermission, Guy Krenz and I will recap the first 20 minutes of play and go over some scores from around the league. Idaho wins the draw. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Cuddle over to Domowski on the right side. Domowski skates out to the lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes over to Pelton Bice. He'll feed it up top for Hedrick on the right point. Over to Cudla. Puck bounced off the Cudla stick. And it goes out to Nutrice. Ducharm over to Hedrick. He's in still heads territory. He'll drop it off for Ducharm across the center ice. Ducharm skates down the middle. Now he steps over the blue line and veers off to the left. As... Ducharm over towards Pelton Bice, who kicks it up top for Hedrick. Now it's Damowski, but Simer kick save by Metcalf. Now the puck goes back to Damowski on the right side. Damowski over to Hedrick in the high slot. He'll feed it to his left for Kudla. Now the Ducharm, who scored Idaho's goal 104 in. Kudla over to Hedrick. He skates towards his right. Hedrick will get it back to the left for Ducharm. He'll take a lefty shot, saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Kudla in the far corner. Now across Damowski, he'll take a lefty shot that goes wide. As Cudla over to the left side, now to Ducharm. Ducharm up top for Hedrick, now to Domowski. Back to Hedrick, who fakes a one-timer. He gathers it and glides it to Ducharm. Now across to Domowski. Domowski with a lefty shot that goes wide as he tried to go glove side on Metcalf. Ducharm in the left point, across to Domowski. 15 seconds left in the period. Over to Ducharm. He fires a shot that goes wide. Metcalf goes down, but he gets back to his feet. 10 seconds left in the period. Hedrick will skate towards his left. Hedrick with the righty shot. Glove saved by Metcalf. And Garrett holds on with 4.4 seconds left in the first. Wide well, pumping one shot after another, but Metcalf stood tall. Excellent sequence there from Garrett Metcalf. Tyson really has settled into this game. Hit a flurry of great saves, but most notably at the top of that power play, going cross crease from right to left. Made a great pad save. Great night for Garrett Metcalf. Looks like they were certainly looking for Domowski over on the right side. Domowski hasn't scored in this series. And it looks like he's due. He's got 28 goals this season, a plus 31 rating. Off the draw, Domowski shot. That's blocked by Tho, and it kicks out to center ice. And that will do it for 20 minutes of play here at Maverick Center. Utah led after one period last night. The Grizzlies once again lead after one period tonight. As Idaho scored 104 into the contest, as Justin Ducharm got his 14th of the year with Owen Hedrick and Patrick Kudla getting the assist. Grizzlies got on the board 5-16 in, as Fitz got his 17th of the year with Jamison getting the assist, as Jamison now has a point in eight of his last nine games. The Rooster crowed 643 into the first, and Nolan Ritchie picked up an assist, which is his first professional point. Martel now has a goal in seven straight games. When we come back in two minutes, Guy Krenzel will recap the first 20 minutes of play and will also go over some scores from around the league. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Stillheads 1. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are gonna help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. 
Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand, so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Steelheads 1 after 20 minutes of play. I'm Guy Carenza alongside Tyson Whiting. It was a fun, fast, and furious first period here at the Mavericks Center. It's just a minute and four seconds into the first period. Justin Ducharme got, gets his, his 14th goal of the year and made it 1-0 Idaho. Hedrick and Kudla pick up the assists. But the Grizzlies were able to rally back after it seemed like the play was in their own zone for the first four minutes. The tides turned as Dylan Fitz, 5-16 into the first, tied us up at one with his 17th goal of the year. Kind of just a sneaky shot from his office on the near circle, kind of just twisted away from the defender and just fired it on net. Dylan Wells, the goaltender, didn't really have a chance to even see it or stop it. Keaton Jamison picks up an assist on the Fitz goal. Then the Rooster Crowed, 6.43 into the first period. Jordan Martell makes it a 2-1 game, scoring his 17th of the season. And in his Maverick Center debut, Nolan Ritchie picks up his first pro points. Jordan Martell's been hot as of late. He now has 10 goals and 5 assists in his last 10 games. Shots are 12-8 in favor of Idaho. Utah's 0 for 1 on the power play. Idaho has three has 33 seconds remaining on their first power play of the game. As Kyle Mayhew went to the box at 18:33 into the first period. As for shots on the Grizzlies side of things, Brandon Color has not scored and doesn't have a point so far in this game, but he's been noticeable. He leads all Grizzlies with two shots so far in this game. Garrett Metcalf got the shot, got the start in net here tonight for the Grizzlies. After allowing the first goal of the game on the first shot, he settled into the game quite nicely, and he has stopped 11 of 12. Dylan Wells, for the second time this series, gets the start in net for the Steelheads. He started in Wednesday night's battle. He has stopped six of eight. And so Tyson, for the Grizzlies, after the first, after they allow the first goal of the game really found a way to rally back. And I think it's because of the youngsters on this team, all that speed, all that energy. Chris was able to take that energy, also feed off the crowd energy, go the other way and get the next two. Well, I think about some of the guys Grizzlies lost due to injury over the last couple months. Cam Strong and Dakota Raby are two of Utah's fastest players. They might have been Utah's two fastest players. And, you know, you lose a guy like George, like Johnny Walker and a skilled forward like Zach Sekos and Ryan Kanas, which really needed to replenish the forward lineup. And he went out and made some great additions. It looks like Mullen Ritchie is going to be an outstanding player as a pro, whether it's going to be in this league or I project it maybe being an AHL player next year. He's that skilled. Uh, Ritchie looks like he's got good speed, but he also has a good sense of, of uh, you know, when to make that pass and, uh, you know, when to shoot. And it looked like he was somebody the Grizzlies were looking for on their one power play chance. And I really like Mick Messner. He's somebody that looks like he's going to battle along the boards. And he didn't play a ton in that first period, but I looked like what I saw from Messner. And I also really liked what I saw from Kyle Mayhew. Not a very big guy, but he was willing to get physical. And he took a, you know, he committed a penalty there late in the first period, but that was just from him playing hard. And he's not very big. And I think teams probably figure that they could play physical against him. Well, no, it looks like Mayhew's going to hold pretty strong. He came, he came from a winning program at the University of Denver and won a national championship last season where he was a teammate with Cameron Wright. And so he knows what winning looks like at the college level. And it looks like he's really brought a winning attitude to this Grizzlies team. And so I really think Utah looks strong in that first period after allowing that goal 104 in. Yeah, the three newest Grizzlies all have made an impact in this game. Mayhew is a plus one so far in this game, as is Mick Messner. And as we mentioned before, Nolan Ritchie got his first pro point in hey, this game. Hey, so Luke Martin's a plus two. Luke Martin and his, re his Maverick center return. He's looked great, and so for the Grizzlies, it's just 
you add those guys into the lineup, and it seems like the Grizzlies are a faster team, and it seems like they're playing like a hungry team, like a team that wants to make the playoffs and a team that wants to take down the best team in the league, their biggest rival, the Idaho Steelheads. And after it allowed the one early, it looked like Garrett Metcalf settled in. And on Idaho's power play late in the first period, they really peppered Metcalf with some difficult-looking shots, and Metcalf made some outstanding saves there in the final minute. Yeah, he did, Tyson. Four of Idaho's 12 shots came on that power play sequence, and they still have 33 seconds to go on that. They'll start with that at the top of the second period. Scoring chances were seven apiece. Utah won the faceoff battle 11-9. to nine. As I mentioned before, shots on goal were 8-12 to 12 in favor of the Steelheads. Hits were 7-3 to 3 in favor of Idaho, and giveaways were one apiece. And, I mean, you talked about Garrett Metcalf really settling into that game. I mean, you think about 7 out of Idaho's 12 shots being prime scoring chances. Garrett Metcalf stood tall and really bounced back after that opening start to the game. And I got to say, for a team like Idaho that really challenges you in your own zone as much as they do, only one giveaway in the first period, certainly an outstanding mark as Grizzlies, despite losing Connor McDonald for tonight. It's not a season-ending injury. It's just kind of a lingering injury that really dates back to a few months ago, uh, probably back to the month of December even. Um, so that's just one of those things that's just been lingering. He's been playing through it. Uh, but, you know, one giveaway against a team like Idaho, I think that's outstanding this first period. It really is, Tyson, when you consider all the young talent on the Grizzlies team. You'd expect a few rookie mistakes here and there, but only one giveaway after 20 minutes of play against a team like Idaho that really capitalizes on turnovers. I think the Grizzlies have done a really outstanding job in that regard. And then you think about the faceoff battle, 11-9 to in favor of the Grizzlies. I think the key to beating the Steelheads is to have equal or greater possession than the Steelheads. Offense is the best defense. It seems like when the Steelheads have the puck, they want to spend all of their time in the Grizzlies zone, kind of just suffocate the defense to the point where when the Grizzlies do get a clear out into the neutral zone, the best they can do is get a line change, and Idaho just reloads and goes right back into the Grizzlies zone. So the way you beat Idaho is you have strong play through the neutral zone and you have possession. And so far, the Grizzlies have done that. That's amazing. Game after game, the rooster seems to be a constant. He was all alone on the right side, and he didn't miss his chance. 6.43 into the first, and that's a deciding goal right now. And it's just amazing to see the consistency of Jordan Martel. That's something that maybe in the first two months you'd see games, you'd see flashes uh, where Martel would look like the best player on the ice. But recently, over the last, I'd say, 10 games or so, Martel's looked like the best player on the ice each and every game. He really has emerged, hasn't he, Tyson? I mean, Jordan Martel, you're right, he's shown – flashes throughout the earlier parts of the season that he can be a really special player and now he's just really turned on the Jets as of late he's playing with a lot of confidence a lot of swagger got himself moved up to that second line with Ripe, and now Nolan Richie slides onto that line and I think that line is going to be dangerous I really think that those three are going to de develop some really great chemistry. We've already got the rooster red hot. Richie was playing really well in this game, and Cameron Wright really has adapted quite well, taking over that center role. I mean, he was playing on the wing for the first part of the season, having a phenomenal rookie season, leading the Grizzlies in points. And then Sekos goes down, and he's asked to move to center, take some face-offs. And I think really, I mean, he's done everything that coach has asked him to do, and then some. He's done an excellent job. And we've got an outstanding Saturday night crowd here at Maverick Center. You want to be part of Grizzmania next week as the Grizzlies take on the Tulsa Oilers for the final three games of the regular season as Utah is going to be battling for a playoff spot. And when we come back to the Rio Tinto Kennecott intermission report, we'll go over some scores along the Mountain Division and how it, it, how it really impacts the playoff race and what the Grizzlies' chances are of reaching the playoffs once again this season. After one period over at... Maverick Center, that's where we're at. Uh, it's great to be watching live hockey tonight in front of a great Maverick Center crowd. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Stillheads 1 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Stillheads 1. First intermission here at Maverick Center. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. Utah comes into play tonight, tied for fourth in the Mountain Division with 78 stand, or 68 standings points and an even 500 winning percentage at 32, 32, and 4. They're tied with Kansas City and Rapid City. Utah does have the tiebreaker, which is regulation wins. Utah is 27. Kansas City and Rapid City each have 25. In the Mountain Division tonight, doesn't look like a ton of help coming the Grizzlies' way. As naturally, my phone a little bit slow to react. Late second period, Kansas City leads Tulsa five to nothing. Last night, Tulsa got a four-two victory, but tonight it's all Kansas City as they're late in the second period. And a guy named Vanderbeek, who did not play against the Grizzlies this season, but Vanderbeek has a hat trick already for Kansas City. Uh, Borchard, I'm going to assume that's Curtis Borchard, who was a former Utah Jazz draft pick 20 years ago. He scored for Kansas City, and Ryan Harrison has also found the back of the net as the Mavericks lead 5-0 over the Oilers. Remember, the Grizzlies will host Tulsa next week on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And the Allen Americans, early third period, they lead Savannah 4-1. to That game just underway in the third period. As Hank Crone has three goals, he has scored goals 46, 47, and 48 this season. The former Grizzly, Chris Maleri, gets his seventh goal of the year. And Swetlikoff has scored for Savannah that coming late in the second period. It's Allen four, Savannah one. So it doesn't look like much help coming from the rest of the scoreboard. So it looks like the Grizzlies are going to have to take care of business here tonight. That's absolutely right, Tyson. I mean, the Grizzlies aren't getting any help, it seems like, today. But the good news is that the Grizzlies, at this moment, control their own destiny. Uh, all they got to do is win out or win the majority of their games, and they'll be just fine. And they'll slide into the remaining three playoff slots in the Mountain Division. I mean, think about Idaho already has clinched the division, the conference, and pretty much everything they can. Yeah. They'll be the number one seed in the division. The Allen Americans, if that score holds, will move to 73 points and have sole possession of the second spot, regardless of what happens here tonight. Wichita Thunder standing pat at 70 points. They're not in action here tonight, as are the Rapid City Rush, so they'll remain at 70 and 68 points, respectively. You think about the Grizzlies and the Kansas City Mavericks, those are really the two teams to watch. They're both tied at 68 with the Rapid City Rush, but the Grizzlies own the tiebreaker against those two other teams as it goes to regulation wins. And so the Grizzlies own that with 27, as opposed to the other two teams, 25. So as long as the Grizzlies keep winning, they'll do just fine. They own all the tiebreakers, but the biggest thing is you got to win. All right, Allen having five games left starting tonight. I've already got Allen pen penciled in for a playoff spot just based on what their schedule looks like. And Wichita only has two games left. They have 70 standings points are in third place. So most they can get is 74. They've got two games against the Allen Americans, one in each side. Uh, Rapid City's got three games left, but that's against the Idaho Steelheads, so they've got a really tough schedule. Kansas City is the wild card. Who really knows what to expect from Kansas City? They lead 5 nothing against Tulsa tonight. Uh, Kansas City next week is at Allen on Wednesday, and then they host the Cincinnati Cyclones on Friday and Saturday. So they've got some tough opponents through the last three games. And for Kansas City, you're facing Allen, who's going to be a desperate team. And we saw Cincinnati a couple weeks ago. They're about one of the best teams in the league. 
Everything seems to be working in the Grizzlies' favor, Tyson. I mean, you look at the remaining schedules for the other teams in the Mountain Division, and you see that the Grizzlies have the Tulsa Oilers on the schedule. Those are games that they should win. But that just makes this game ultra important because this is a game that, while the Grizzlies are hanging in there, the Grizzlies are not expected to win this game. Idaho's the best team in the league, so I'm sure everybody around the league penciled the Steelheads in for another easy win here tonight. But if the Grizzlies come away with those two standing points, then go into those games against Tulsa with maybe a potential edge against Kansas City or still in a tie with Kansas City, that would be huge. And that makes this game not a must-win game, but a very critical one. Idaho will be on the power play the first 33 seconds of the second period as Kyle Mayhew is serving the rest of his penalty. I'm thinking about Grizzlies fan Kyle Mayfield. <laughs> I'd want to call Kyle Mayhew Kyle Mayfield the entire game. Uh, Kyle Mayfield, who, I mean, it seems like some games he's sitting over in Section 114 down below, but it seems like there's been other games where he's been sitting over in Section 113. Good to see Kyle Mayfield here at Maverick Center tonight. As Grizzlies need black jerseys with white numbers and professional green trim. Take on Idaho wearing a white jersey with white numbers, white lettering, and a little bit of blue mixed in to the forearms, black shorts. As But we got an interesting second period. And if you're Utah, you led after one period last night. You led after two periods last night. It's kind of a rarity. It was only the second time all year that the Grizzlies had blown a lead when leading after two periods and you think about the grizzlies it's only their um you know i think it was the first time all year they had lost when leading after one so utah's done a good job protecting leads it's a one goal margin they're heading into the second period well that's why idaho is such a good team tyson they're very resilient and if you make a mistake they will capitalize on it and unfortunately for the grizzlies that was what happened on friday night so for the Grizzlies, if you play mistake-free hockey, you'll be just fine. Puck is dropped to start the second period. Idaho gets it. Justin Ducharme skates towards the right circle. Lefty shot goes wide as Idaho quickly got in the offensive zone. Ten seconds into the second period. As couplet to the left point. Gets it across to Hedrick. Hedrick with an assist tonight. Idaho. Glide it to Demowski back to Hedrick on the right side. He'll skate towards his left. Now he'll feed it to Ducharme. Ducharme on the left point. will switch places with Hedrick. Hedrick now on the left side over to Ducharme. One timer and it goes wide as it crashes off the glass. Penner gets it as Penner will lift it out to center ice. He goes past Ducharme as Kyle Mayhew comes out of the box. It's a Utah disaster cleanup. Successful penalty kill. They're skating five on five. Utah leads two to one. 40 seconds into the second period as Casey Johnson to new tries. He'll cross center and he'll dump it in. It goes to Luke Martin in the near circle of Utah zone. He'll tap it off a stanchion. Martin gets it back. Martin moves it ahead to Richie. Over to Martell on the right point. Martell over to Martin. Martin on the right side. He'll glide it across to Tho. Tho left wing shot, and it's blocked by Ducharme. Tho gets it back, and he'll spin it past Cameron Wright. As Richie gets on the right side, Richie displaying good hands. We'll throw it back to the corner that he vacated. As Martel collides with Casey Johnson, who's been physical tonight. As Johnson, who had a Gordie Howe hat trick against the Grizzlies last year, gets over to Martel. Now high slot, Richie with a shot, and it goes wide. And as it looks like Wells might have gotten a piece of it. And as Richie... Over in the far corner, spins it around. Martell on the right side. I look to center to bounce off of Johnson's stick and goes back to Martell. Martell along the near goal line. Centers to Martin. Shot. Saved by Wells. As Martell was to the right side, centered it to Martin. And he got all of the one-timer, but Dylan Wells was able to make the save with 18.25 left in the second. I got to give a lot of credit to Dylan Wells for making that save because that's an absolutely lethal shot from Luke Martin. You leave him alone in the slot. And he just whips it towards the net. Good reflexes from Wells. But, boy, it's good to have Luke Martin back, and his shot is absolutely lethal. Martin had 10 goals for the Grizzlies in the regular season, and another two in the playoffs. He had eight goals in 25 games for Jacksonville earlier this year, and he scored on Wednesday night with 110 left in regulation to tie the score at two. Draw one by, well, it gets pinned towards the boards. Utah battles. Grizzlies come out of it. Finds a right side shot. Saved by Wells. And the ricochet off Wells gets kicked out to center ice. Idaho gets it near him. Skates towards the corner. Kyle Mayhew takes it away as the puck glides behind Utah's net. Idaho will collide sticks with Cutler as the puck flips out of play off the protective netting. 18.08 left in the second. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone where Garrett Metcalf is stationed. As he's making his first start since February 20th against Orlando. And for Garrett... If they're not playing since February 20th, I think he's looked pretty sharp in this game. Just needed a few shots to kind of settle in like we suspected in the open. 
and he's been great ever since. Idaho's taken 12 shots. Grizzlies have taken 10. The Stillheads, or the Grizzlies, have taken the first two shots of this second period. As they're working on a piece of glass, or maybe part of the stanchion behind Utah's net over along the left side. So it looks like they're going to get some help with 18.08 left in the second as they'll take a look and fix that. All oh, piece of the glass cracked. That's what happened. The piece of the glass cracked behind Garrett Metcalf's net over there where the Maverick sign is. Right there on the bottom of the glass looked like uh, there was um, kind of that rock chip you get on your windshield. Looks like that was cracked open, so we might have a delay as they might repair the glass. Well, I don't think we've seen that in a while. A uh, broken think... piece of glass that had to be repaired in game. Yeah, I don't know if we've seen that all season long. This might be the first time. Cam McGuire sitting in the other side of section 114 is going to have to kill some time as well as us. As both teams are going to stretch it out. Looks like they'll bring a new piece of glass out. It's over near the, the gold judge box over there on the left side. And it looks like they're going to get a new piece of glass. As there's 18.08 left in the second period. Fans are dancing to YMCA. And I think we'll dance to YMCA yeah, well, as well. We, we guys got join a in lot here. of fun here at Maverick Center. Oh, oh we, false, false start. start. We come back in two minutes. We'll have hockey here at Maverick Center as Utah leads Idaho 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Well, you should have seen Guy and I dancing to YMCA during the glass delay as there was a crack in the glass behind Garrett Metcalf's net. They are carefully... Taking one pane of glass out. Looks like they're going to replace it with something else. As there's 18.08 left in the second period. Good job by the Grizzlies on the penalty kill there the first 30 seconds of the second period. And, you know, Ido looked like it, the puck first two minutes of the second period looked like the action was in the Grizzlies. Um, after allowing the one early, it looks like Garrett Metcalf's really settled in. Yeah, he has, Tyson. He's looked fantastic ever since that opening shot of the game. I suspect that the speed of Ducharme and just the way that shot was angled towards him on the backhand, caught him off guard. But really, you're right, he's settled in. He's just needed a few shots, a few reps to really settle into this game. And I have to think that this stoppage of play here benefits the Grizzlies as the Steelheads were attacking in the Grizzlies zone. So the Grizzlies catch a little bit of a break with the stoppage here. So you can see most of the roster is out on the ice, kind of skating yeah, around, right keeping, their, keeping a little loose, not letting their muscles tighten up. Yeah, it's almost in a, in like a, a second intermission <laughs> right here. Hopefully in a minute or so we'll be back to live action. Everybody just trying to stay loose. The majority of players on both teams are out on the ice right now just stretching out and making sure they stay loose and limber. 
As looks like they're going to put the glass back in place. It's certainly a tricky process. Oh, don't drop that thing. <laughs> and it looks like, oh, no. It looks like they're going to take that piece of eye, uh, glass Ooh. back. Well, I think they got the wrong size. Oh. I think they got the wrong size. They're going to have to go get a new pane of glass. Meanwhile, Cam McGuire, the Idaho broadcaster, is probably using this time to go over all the league records that Idaho is trying to play for here in the final four games. It's unbelievable, you know, uh, with the records that Idaho is going for. Right now, they have 55 wins this season. They are one win away from tying the Louisiana Ice Gators back in the the 2001-02 season. And uh, so they're one win away from tying that and two away from breaking that record with four games left. Idaho this year won 32 home games. That set a new league record. It really was their home record that cost them last season as the Stillheads missed the playoffs, believe it or not, last year. It was the fact the Stillheads really struggled on the road. Well, they solved that this year as the Stillheads are 23-6-1-2 and two on the road. I project the Grizzlies to be the three seed in the Mountain Division, and a reason for that is the Grizzlies played 500 hockey on the road this year. They just completed up the road schedule Last night, and Utah went 16, 16, and 4 on the road. They picked up 36 out of 72 standings points. And, Guy, I think that's a big reason. If the Grizzlies win the playoffs, those road victories are certainly critical because in this league, it can be very difficult to win away from your home ice. Good teams win at home. Great teams win on the road. Yep. You can go into a hostile environment and win on the road. You do that with the majority of the time. You're destined to be a playoff team, really. And so for the Grizzlies, you project them to be that third seed. That would most likely mean that the Grizzlies would have a date with the Allen Americans in the first round of the Kelly Cup playoffs. Personally, I think that the Grizzlies match up against the Steelheads a lot better than they do against the Allen Americans. So if the Grizzlies found a way into the fourth seed, I would be fine with that, honestly. I think that for the Grizzlies... You've seen the Steelheads now 18 times a year this year. Yeah. Uh, you know them inside and out. You've hung them with them uh, throughout the last six games that you've seen them. I like the way the Grizzlies match up against the Steelheads. So uh, a lot of people will be seeing the Grizzlies and the Steelheads maybe just pencil in Idaho to win that series. But I would say, oh, well, wait a minute. Pump the brakes. <laughs> this saying, Grizzlies team is for real. Just because you're on the Grizzlies hockey network. No, 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 I'm not just saying that. Because you think about teams. That, like, look at the NHL. The President's yeah. Trophy curse. Right? That top team, yes, they had a fantastic regular season. But it seems like they just struggle to win in the postseason because the postseason is just a whole different animal. It's a totally different game. And so I think if the Steelheads met the Grizzlies, that would be the worst possible matchup for Idaho. I think in the NHL, you could look at the Boston Bruins mm-hmm. having a dominant regular season. What are they going to do come playoff time? I mean, uh, the, the Bruins look like they could win. A, they could break the record for most wins in a regular season. Well, think about the records that they break. The 96 Red Wings and the Lightning a few years ago. When the Lightning got swept in the first round, by Columbus, and the Red Wings lost to the Avalanche in the conference finals that year. Yeah, and I mean, so it, well, it's about the effort that you take in winning all those regular season games. Do you have enough Petro? Do you have enough gas come playoff time? It's going to be interesting to see. I think I, I definitely think Boston does break that win record. I mean, they've had a fantastic season. There's really not a, a lot of flaws with the Boston Bruins. And it, really, their comparable is the Idaho Steelheads here in the ECHL. It's just a team that's all around breaking records. They're good in almost every statistical category. Not a lot of weaknesses. But, I mean, all it takes is for a team in the playoffs to get good goaltending, be really motivated, and just, like you, like I said before, know that team inside and out. And they, and they could do some damage in the playoffs. So you look at Boston. I think if a team like Florida matches up against Boston in the first round, that's a divisional opponent. The Florida Panthers, they're hot. In their scoring department, and they're also getting some good goaltending as of late. They could be scary come playoff time if they face Boston. No, we're not going over blowout material. There is a piece of glass that's <laughs> broken uh, behind Garrett Metcalf's net. I think what we do is just remove every fan from that section and just play with that, that hole right there in the glass. You just you know, play with that vacated spot there because I imagine some people in the back are looking for some a piece of glass, that uh, pane of glass that can fit that spot. What if they don't find any that fit that spot? Uh, Jared Youngman's been on the phone. I think he's a little concerned that we're going to find some glass that fits that as both teams. I would imagine at some point both teams might just head to the locker room and call it second intermission. And both teams are still out there trying to stretch it out as they're looking at that vacated pane of glass. And there was a crack in it. And so this glass delay is taking quite a bit. But now we've gone to the 
beer chugging portion on the video board. Hey, you bet. Chug that beer. All right. Got it. Oh, here we go. Here comes another one. There's another one. Come on. Chug that beer. You can do it. Yes. Ooh. Oh, come on. He's struggling. Oh, 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 boo. Oh, I couldn't quite get that beer chugged. 18 oh, to 8 is left in the second period. Utah leads 2 to 1. Well, he's got a can. Like, how can we tell if you finish yeah, the can or not? Yeah, if you got beer cans, yeah, slug that thing over your head. Not quite the same effect. You got to have one of those things where you can see the beer being consumed. I'm not really sure what's going on here, Tyson. I think they're just looking for that pane of glass. Yeah, they're they're searching I, high and low. I'm not theory, sure if they can find any. I suspect that there might be a <laughs> goblin living in the depths of Maverick Center. Really? That, that's the goblin that stole the iPad that one night. And now it's gone and stolen that pane of glass, just causing all kinds of havoc here at Maverick Center. And so I, I this, wonder, I mean, I know we have kittens. I know there was a cat that had kittens here at the Maverick Center. Some cutie patooties. That's what somebody yeah. uh, here in the Maverick Center calls cats. Good, good looking cat. Good looking kittens. This delay is now reaching, what, 10 minutes? You can tell Cam McGuire is searching for material. I know we're searching for material. But it's interesting to see the Idaho still and what they're able to do come playoff time. And they're certainly an interesting story because they've had an historically good year. As for the Grizzlies trying to defend their Mountain Division championship, despite the fact that Utah lost about four key forwards. You know, Johnny Walker, Zach Sekos. I think Sekos might be the Grizzlies' best all-around player, at least at portions of the season he was. You know, and you lose two speedsters and Cam Strong and Dakota Raby. You know, it's taken the Grizzlies a few weeks to replace those guys, but I think... And the new players have been really impressed with what I've seen from Nolan Ritchie. And, you know, it looks like Mick Messner certainly made a contribution as well. And I really like the speed and playmaking potential of Kyle Mayhew. I think the Grizzlies really have positioned themselves to where they can start to peak at the right time come playoff time. And you take a team like Idaho, even though they are resting a couple big guns in A.J. White and Matt Register tonight, and the Stillheads are pretty much doing a show-and-go as Idaho was on a bus this afternoon. They arrived about three hours before face-off. As they're continuing to look and try to find some glass, the fans are starting to get restless. There's another beer being chugged, but yet, yet again, that's another can. We can't tell if that beer gets finished or not. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Like there you go. That one. Kind of low Grizz jersey. I mean, you talk about the infusion of youth that the Grizzlies have had, and that's due to the injuries. And I, I really wish that we would have gotten to see those guys finish out the rest of the season, the guys like Cam Strong, Johnny Walker, Dakota Raby, uh, I mean, they were all playing fantastic hockey at the time yeah. they were going down. It was really sad to see them just knocked out for the remainder of the year. But I think we got to give a lot of credit to Ryan Kanasiewicz and Jared Pike just for the talent spotting. Come on, chug that beer. Oh, it looks like he's going to struggle. He's not even halfway oh, no. through that thing. Oh, that looks like That's an amateur there. Oh, no. Call the night, buddy. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, he, had to re he had to refocus there. I like yeah. no. No, nope, you can't uh, hold you it can't up. Hold the cup over your head. You didn't finish it. Didn't even get through like half the oh. beer. Again, beer cans. Like we can't see you finish the beer. Yeah, we got some cups on the side. You know, only like part of the glass was chipped. Why don't we just like take some duct tape? You know, cover up the pane of glass that was chipped, and then put that thing back in place. Now I'm no expert on these panes of glass, but the crack was towards the bottom of the pane. So what if we just flip it so yeah. the crack is up at the top, so it's protected by the netting? And that way we can keep playing. Yeah, I think that'd be good. There you go. Chug that thing. That could be a chugged beer. Oh, you yeah. Bet. There we yeah. go. There we go. You got it. One chug beer. You got it, baby. Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like we're having a really tough time finding the glass yeah, to replace the one that got oh, cracked. Oh, there we go. Looks like they found one. Jared Yumman had to come all the way from his suite in Section 113 and point out to the ice crew that this is it this is the pane of glass that's going to get us restarted all right there's the pane right. of glass they're going to put it back up right there near the maverick side behind the net that utah is defending here in the second period utah leads two to one 1808 we've got a glass repair who's our glass sponsor i there's got to be one look, well, look across one now the, look across the board see if we can find the glass sponsor that could certainly be good there's a chuck beer that baby he finished yeah, that one with that ease. One. As they put the glass in place, they got the two stanchions. It's going to hold it up. Looks like the glass is the same, is the right size. While they're struggling a little bit, as the glass wobbles back and forth. Three games left in the regular season after tonight. All of them will be here at Maverick Center. You guys, look at the stanchions in place. 
They're the real MVPs tonight, getting us back to live action here. And whoever found that pane of glass, it could have been Jared Youngman. You're the real MVP tonight as Grizzlies are all out there. It's almost like a second warm-up for both teams. Yeah, I mean, it really is, Tyson. I mean, that's a lengthy delay. Uh, <laughs> if you're Idaho, you really got to get stretched out after a five-hour bus ride earlier this yeah, earlier today. There's a Chuck Beer by that guy sporting a three-day growth. Looks like he's, start, he's starting to grow a beard there. Guy and I have already started growing our playoff beards because it feels like the playoffs don't start in a week from now, you know, two weeks from now. It feels like the playoffs start right now for the Grizzlies. They need to play good hockey in order to secure a playoff spot. And That's it starts true. here tonight. Big hands to the people for putting the glass in place. Time of delay, probably, what, 15 minutes? Something like that. I mean, my beard's just getting longer from the time we've been sitting here. I mean, who am I kidding? I've had a beard all season long. I think I'm going to take a page out of Luke Barton's book and Keaton Jameson. I might go with a playoff mustache this year. I could have chugged six beers and been sober by the time we got this delay over with. <laughs> okay, so now it seems like finally, after an eternity, we're finally going to get back to live action. I wonder how the momentum is going to change. It's almost like you said, like a second intermission. So we'll see how that plays out. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Tyler Penner will take the draw against Jade Miller. 18 minutes, 8 seconds left in the second period. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Idaho scored first tonight as Justin, Justin Ducharme found the back of the net. 104 in. Dylan Fitz timed it up. Find 16 in. And the Rooster made it 2-1. to 643 into the first period. Draw is going to be in the far circle. As Linesman drops the puck, we're finally back to live action. As the puck kicks off of Pfizer skate, it goes to Kudla. Back to the corner. Damowski will tap it off a Grizzly skate. It rolls to Miner, who covers up in the far side near the goal line. As Kyle May, he was one-on-one -on -one in a battle with Idaho out in front. As Draw's going to stay in the Grizzly zone in the far circle. You got to think about Garrett Metcalf in this game. The Salt Lake City native playing for his hometown team, the Utah Grizzlies. In a big game. I mean, this is a critical game. This is a chance for Garrett to really shine, and he's done just that so far in this game. McCaff, a former six-round draft pick by the Anaheim Ducks in the 2015 draft, 179th overall. Franklin will take the draw against Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies' Iron Man. Two shots taken by the Grizzlies in the second period. None yet for the Steelheads. Utah wins the draw as Terran Pfizer to the right side. He leads Utah with 25 goals. Had to Cutler tapped off his stick. As Penner kept it in the high slot, he'll feed it to the corner, but Cutler's there for Idaho. He'll glide it to Franklin at center ice down the middle. Franklin lifts it in the air as it glides towards the end boards of Utah's zone. As the glass shakes a little bit, that was near the area where they had to replace the glass. Big time hit delivered by Penner as Martin gains center ice, wearing number 44, which he wore last year. Martin over to Mayhew. Martin Mayhew is a general manager for the Washington Commanders. As Mayhew gets blasted by Zane Franklin, Mayhew gets back to his feet. Idaho spins along the boards. Luke Martin gets it in the left point. He'll get the Pfizer in the slot. Back to Martin. Martin with a righty shot. On his block by Franklin. Stick and it flies out of play off the protective netting. 17-16 left in the second. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Well, they tested out the glass. Tyson, big thunderous hit. It's good. The glass is going to hold. It's good. And so, big hit over in the far boards. But, hey, glass works. So, repair was well done. And now the Grizzlies... Took the puck and went the other way. Now they're in the steelhead zone. Keaton Jamison on the draw. He's been fantastic in the faceoff circle all season long. Look for him to be a big factor here on this next shift. Jamison, Fitz, and Messner are out there. That's the three forwards. Sure, and Aaron Thoe, the defensive pairing. Looks like the Grizzlies switched up the defensive pairings for this second period. As Idaho wins the faceoff, Demetrius Kumatsis, who played at Arizona State, moves ahead to Kawaguchi. Kawaguchi dumps in. Zach Walker chases after it. And icing is called. Oh, it looked like they could have negated it as Walker got around Thoe. But icing is on the Stillheads with 17.06 left in the second. Yeah, Tyson, I mean, I, I'm i not down at ice level, but I'm pretty sure that Walker can make a case that he won that race. Well, they could usually say that it's not really at the goal line. It's yeah. kind of without the yeah, hash gonna mark. Yeah, center. Yeah, the referee shakes his head and says that should have been called icing. As draw is going to come out to center ice. Jameis will take the draw against Ty Pelton Bynes, who scored the game winner on Wednesday night. As Idaho won 3 to 2 in overtime on Wednesday and 2 to 1 last night. And as the Stillheads win the draw, Zach Walker, he gets blasted by James Shearer. Shearer holds up Walker. Walker has delivered his fair share of hits as well. Walker gets hit by Thoe as Walker gets stripped up by Shearer. No call. Nick Kanadi in the right point fires towards the net. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to the far, serve, far corner. And as Jameson avoids a check of Walker. 
as Messner collides with Kanadi. Now behind the net, Walker chips out in front. As Kawaguchi in the right circle lost his balance, he gets it back as he's got the puck. He's so glided to, to, to Kamatsis. Left side, Kamatsis, toe drag, shot. And it gets blocked by Shearer. Rebound goes to Fitz. We're lifting out to center ice. Kanadi gets the wobbling puck at the Idaho blue line as he's being shadowed by Messner. As Kanadi ahead to Kamatsi, he couldn't reach it, but he got a piece of it. No icing. Puck deep in the Grizzly zone as Damalski keeps the right side, looks to center to Kawaguchi. Right picked it off, and he'll bounce it off of Pelton Bice's chest as it goes to Semek, the Arizona State product. Teammates of Kamatsi's for a few years. Up ahead to Fitz, looking for Messner, who gets hit as he was trying to accept the puck. To Charm over to the far side, gets pushed by Fitz. The puck goes back to the corner, deep in the stillhead zone as they glide it across the net to Kamatsi's. He gets pushed by Richie. Richie battles, wearing number 61. Kyle Betts wore that number earlier this year. Martell battling. He gets held up by Johnson. Now Martell breaks free. Skates towards the right side. I try to center it out in front. It bounced off of uh, Ducharme skate. This goes back to the far side as they move it ahead. Two on one. Three on one. Ducharme skates towards the right circle. They go up the shot. Stay by Metcalf. Rebound goes to the near side. Martell gets it ahead. Three on three. Martell to the right side. Gets over to Richie. Richie gets dragged down by Haskin. And no call. The officials will let him play this week. Right skates in near side. Goal line shot and is blocked as Idaho will carry it out to center ice. Justin Misiak thought that right held him up as still had still in their own zone as Haskinen moves it ahead to Franklin who enters the zone. Franklin, the former Allen American, gets stripped up by Kyle Mayhew. And for the second time tonight, and now Louis Nurem's going to go attack Kyle Mayhew. Nurem pushes Mayhew. Risky play by Nurem, risking getting a penalty like that. Yeah, there really is no need to get in the face of Mayhew. But, I mean, you think about that penalty that he just took. I, think, I that, think I'm okay with him taking that penalty because otherwise it would have been a straight break to the net for the Steelheads. So, might have saved a goal there. Now the Grizzlies going to have to come up with some good work on the penalty kill. I think maybe Nirem thought that Mayhew got some knee in the way and maybe thought it was a dangerous knee-to-knee -knee type of play. Right. Um, but either way, the still is going to be on the power play. Potentially, but I, I don't think it was intentional. And I think Mayhew knew that. Smith for tripping. 451 into the second period. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Great Saturday night crowd. Makes the last Saturday night home game of the regular season. Tulsa will be in for a three-game series starting on Wednesday night. Jade Miller will take the draw against Keaton Jamison. 15.09 left in the second. Utah leads 2-1. to one. They had a 15-minute delay to repair some glass behind Utah's net as Idaho wins the face-off. As Haskin over to the right side across to Kawaguchi. He'll take a lefty shot. And it's blocked out in front. Might have hit off near him. As over to the near side, Kawaguchi glides it across to Wade Murphy. Now to Haskinen. We'll feed it to his left for Kawaguchi. Now to the near goal line for Niram. Niram over to Kawaguchi. Left circle. He glides it across to Murphy. He'll take a righty shot. It's blocked by Penner. Puck goes back to Miller. Up top for Murphy. Now to Haskin in the high slot. He'll feed it to his left for Kawaguchi. He'll take a lefty shot. It hits the post. Iron unkind as Murphy over to Haskin in the high slot. Haskin and glides to his left for Kawaguchi. He'll feed it to the near goal line. Near him with a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Sure spins along the far boards and exits the zone. 111 left in Idaho's power play. It's their second of the game. As it still had skate from right to left here in the second period. Utah skating from left to right. As Cody Haskin and skates down the middle. He's still in his own zone. He'll pick it to his right now. Throw up behind his back for Ducharme across the center ice. Ducharme gets around Pelton Bice. He gets around Pfizer. He steps over the blue line. As Damowski, nice spin move to the right. Sires the Pelton Bice who couldn't handle it as it glides towards the near corner. As Damowski over to Hedrick. Now across to Kudlin. Now it's Damowski down the middle. Take a lefty shot. It goes high as it hit off the stanchion near the glass that broke earlier. As Hedrick, high slot. Righty shot blocked by Cutler. Pfizer gets in the near corner, and he clears it out. 30 seconds left in Idaho's power play. Grizzlies make a line change. Kudla flies to Neutralize. He'll feed it to Pelton Bice. Trying to drop it off for Kudla, but faked it to him. Ducharme throws to his right for Damowski, who couldn't reach it. He got a piece of it, though, as Luke Martin will spin it along the near boards. It's kept in by Kudla. Kudla skates towards the left side. He'll get it across. Damowski with a right wing shot. It goes wide, and the puck exits the zone. Cameron Wright skates to the right side. He gets the puck. He'll take a shot. Saved by Ogley. Oh, Baked the shot. Wright gets tripped up. No call by the referee. As Mester, right point, takes a shot and goes over the head of Wells. Mayhew's out of the box. It's a Utah disaster cleanup. Successful penalty kill as Martin gets to share in the offensive zone. Now to Mester. He feeds out in front looking for Martel. Shot. Saved by Wells. 
That's why they were looking for Martell, but it glided towards Martin in the left side, and Martin took the shot, and well, somehow made the save and didn't allow a rebound. 12.54 left in the second. We're back in 30 seconds as Utah leads Idaho 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Utah leads 2-1. to one. That was a big-time penalty kill by the Grizzlies. Idaho had some good looks on that power play, but it's still 2-1 Utah. Garrett Metcalf, Tyson, he was great on that penalty kill, and the Grizzlies were doing a good job of taking away shooting lanes, although there was a dangerous chance for Ryan Domowski who missed the net. But I really like what the Grizzlies were able to do after the penalty kill. Puck kind of just trickles into the steelhead zone, and Cameron Wright, in a burst of speed, enters the steelhead zone and has a really dangerous chance. It faked out you and everybody yeah, else, including a shot. Steelhead's goaltender, Dylan Wells. That's right, just fake taking a shot and went behind the net. Almost had a wraparound chance, but that whole ending sequence before the timeout doesn't happen if Cameron Wright doesn't win that race. Nolan Ritchie in his Maverick Center debut will take the drives out there with the Rooster. And Jared Power up top is Kyle Mayhew and Luke Martin. Martin and Mayhew. Martin Mayhew is the general manager of the Washington Commanders of the NH of the NFL as Kamatsis throws it over towards Zach Walker, back to Kamatsis, who skates towards the left circle, but the whistle blows as Ido's call for offside. Well, either these headphones are really good or I couldn't really hear the whistle all that well. Uh, no, Tyson, I think everything's working just fine. It's this crowd here at the Mavericks Center. They're just so loud. I mean, Grizz Mania's in its fullest force. I mean, you can barely hear yourself thinking here. You know that, right? They showed the replay, the right wraparound. Owen Hedrick really made the play, cutting off Cameron Wright. He did a great job there. As Idaho back in their own zone after winning the faceoff, still had skate from right to left. So give Owen Hedrick credit. Could be a 3-1 game if he doesn't cut off right. Right side, Luke Martin in the offensive zone. Battles with Kumatsis. Demetrius is Kumatsis first name as Zane Franklin clears a pass. Jared Power. Foot race towards the Grizzlies zone. A dangerous play as Mayhew got dragged down by Zach Walker. Jared Power goes to confront Walker. Boy, luckily Mayhew got to his feet. That was a dangerous hit as he collided to the boards awkwardly. Luckily, Mayhew's back to his feet. Walker has been known from time to time to throw some, sh to throw some shots that could be questionable. Does look like there's a penalty either way, and it looks like it's just going to be icing on Idaho. 12-23 left in the second. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Well, we're certainly going to have to keep an eye on that beef between Walker and Mayhew. And Walker was barking a few words at Mayhew as the teams both skated down to the steelhead zone for the draw. you got to think that that's not over. Penner will take the draw against Mesiak. It's a draw won by Idaho. Kamatsis, wearing number 21, gets it to Nick Kanati. Turnover. Fires over to Cutler on the right side. Cutler will skate towards the point. Now get it across to Martin. Martin over to Pfizer. One time and it's blocked by Kamatsis. Left wing shot saved by Wells. Puck goes back to Pfizer. Over to Mayhew. One time and it hits the post. No goal. Mayhew was so close to getting his first as a pro. Zach Walker skates down the middle. Slot shot and it's blocked by. Pfizer. Now left side, Kamatsis with a blast. It goes wide as Pelton Bice loses the puck. Cutler glides to Pfizer. Two on two across the center ice. Pfizer glides towards his right. He'll skate towards the right corner. He's being chowed by Kamatsis. Franklin delivers a hit. Martin right side shot. Saved by Wells. And this goes back to Walker who gets to Pelton Bice who will bounce it off the of Grizzly and Aaron Tho. Goes back to neutral. Zach Walker crosses center. Gets it to Kamatsis who dumps it in. As the Steelheads make a line change, Metcalf, Warrior number 39, throws to Pfizer behind his net. Now back to Aaron Tho. He turns it over. Wade Murphy to the right side. Skates towards the point. He'll drop it off. Hayes going to skate towards the right circle. Take a shot that's blocked. Now battle out in front of the net. And it's still in play. Vice over to Murphy. One timer goes wide. Puck goes to the nearest side. It goes past Hayes in and out to neutralize. Hayes going to lose his balance. Tho takes the puck. Three on two. Tho skates towards the high slot. Take a lefty shot. Saved by Wells. And the Idaho net night minder holds on. 11.02 left in the second, but what great action here at Maverick Center. 
Well, Tyson, we had three goals in the first period, but now here in the second period, it seems like we've got a goaltending duel. Oh, mate, he missed it by that much as he hit uh, the post. Oh, it went past Dylan Wells and everything. That is tough. I really thought he scored. Ah, oh, it's just it's tough break. by that much. That's what Maxwell Smart would say. Jameson will take the drop. Action in the still had zone in the near side. Grizzlies win the face off. Fitz throws to Jameson, who skates around Idaho's net. As Jamison tried to drop it off for Semek, but Semek peeled back. As Idaho gets it, Casey Johnson will move it ahead to Kawaguchi. Glides across center ice left wing. Kawaguchi spins along the boards. Idaho to the right side. Loses the puck. Fitz gets it. As he'll throw it ahead to Jamison, and puck goes over his stick. Right point. Hayes going with a shot. And a glove saved by Metcalf. Metcalf made the save from over his head. As we're about halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes, Utah still leads 2-1. to one. Well, Tyson, one thing that led to the Grizzlies' downfall in last night's game was that they were outshot by the Steelheads by a considerable amount in the final two periods of that game. We're tied at 15 shots apiece here in the second period. The Grizzlies have taken eight shots to the Steelheads' three. Boy, it almost feels like a playoff game, even though <laughs> the playoffs are a couple weeks away, and I know the Grizzlies are hoping that they're involved in postseason play here. Grizzlies a consistent winner, but so have the Idaho Steelheads. Idaho missed the playoffs last year. And the Steelheads are certainly going to be a threat to win the Kelly Cup as Idaho wins the draw. Do charm with the shot that goes wide. As Grizzlies throw it to Martel on the near side, it goes past him and out to center ice. Do charm will glide it across to Hedrick. Hedrick back in his own end, being challenged by Richie. Now to Do charm on the near side, he'll move it ahead. Puck bounced off the stick of Willie near him as Mayhew at center ice will dump it in. It's bounced off the end boards on one hop. As Idaho's own Hedrick, who's got an assist tonight, will get it ahead to near him across the center ice right wing. He'll chip it to the corner. Ducharm chasing after it. Ducharm's been very impressive tonight. Mayhew takes it away from him. Nirm delivers a hit on Mayhew. Right side shot to score. Well, he got redirected as Hedrick fired away. Jay Miller was out in front. And we're tied at two. Is it Miller or is it Hedrick? Miller is going to skate to the bench first. As it looks like he has scored his 14th of the season as he high fives everybody on the Stillheads bench. Just your classic redirection on a shot from the right point. That's a tough break for the Grizzlies, Tyson. I mean, they were playing so well here to start the second period. Really should have had a 3-1 lead, but instead, it's just a dip out in front of Metcalf. And now it's a tie game. Those are the type of breaks the Idaho still had been getting all season long. Miller at the goal is 14th of the year. Owen Hedrick with his second assist of the game. Hedrick had the shot from the right side that was redirected by Jade Miller out in front. It's the Grizzlies, two and the Steelheads, two as we're halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. Hedrick crosses center ice after Idaho won the draw. Franklin skates towards the right corner. Franklin now around the net as he's now to the near side. He'll glide it up top for Kubla. Kubla feeds it to the right side for Hedrick. He'll take a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound shot. Saved by Metcalf again. And there's some loose change out in front. And Metcalf covers up. And Franklin loses his pool and throws his punch at a Grizzly. The referee is going to call some penalties. Now Franklin in a pushing match with a Grizzly and Aaron Foe. Franklin's going to go to the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell as Puck bounced off of Metcalf. He covered up and Tyler Penner and company did a great job out in front as Kyle Mayfield from behind the penalty box tells Zane Franklin, come this way, big guy. And this Grizzly's going to get a power play with 9.38 left in the second. Critical point in the game here, Tyson. Grizzlies just surrendered a goal to the Steelheads. Not necessarily their fault, just a deflection out in front. Ends up in the back of their net. They responded quite nicely when Idaho scored the first goal of the game. Let's see if they can respond here for the chance on the power play. Yeah, Franklin threw a couple punches at Aaron Thoe in frustration. And then he pushed Thoe, and referee John Lindner said, you're going to the penalty box. Two minutes for roughing. Time a penalty, 10-22 into the second period. John's going to be in the near circle. It's the Grizzlies, two and the Steelheads, two. Jade Miller will take the draw against Keaton Jamison. Miller scored that second period goal to tie it up. As drop, one by Idaho, they clear it out. Metcalf in front of his net, about 10 feet, gets to Luke Martin. Martin around Utah's net as he's being challenged by Misiak. Now Cutler gets it behind Utah's net. Misiak will retreat and skate off the ice. As 140s left in Utah's power play, Martin gets around near him. Luke Martin crosses center ice. Martin gets back checked by Pelton Bice. Now Martin skates towards the right side in the corner. He tried to chip it to right and pass connected. Right looks to center it. Pass goes wide as Cutler on the left side chips to the corner for Jamison. Jamison behind the goal line. 
Gets to the right, right in the corner. Lines it up top for Cutler. Now up top for Pfizer. Pfizer switches places with Cutler. Pfizer on the left side, skates towards the corner. And Pfizer, thought about getting to Cutler, gets over the right. Left side shot, saved by Wells. Right, glides it to the left point for Cutler, keeps it in. Cutler gets around near him. Near him, pokes it out to center ice. Puck goes to center ice. Pfizer retreats it. Now over to Jamison, but near him gathers it. Near him, over to the left side, gets tripped up by Pfizer. He was looking for a call, none to be had. As Nerim will skate back towards neutral ice as Martin has the puck. Luke Martin gets the neutral ice and will drop it out for Pfizer. 45 seconds in Utah's power play as Pfizer will dance around near Utah's bench. Now Pfizer skates around the center ice logo. Now Pfizer will gain center ice and start the attack as he'll skate towards the right. Now Pfizer down the middle. He'll take a backhand shot. Saved by Wells. And he'll hold on as it looked like Pfizer was trying to catch the still has napping. Started to accelerate around the center ice, got around three skaters, and then with a good backhand look that Wells made the save on. Oh, man, what a great play from Taryn Pfizer. He's most known for his shot, but, man, he's got silky smooth hands. Just goes through the entire defense, but just couldn't find a way to beat Wells' five hole. But a really good job driving the net. Very interesting approach by the Grizzlies on their power play trying to enter the zone. As draws from the far circle. 8.09 left in the second. 31 seconds left in Utah's power play. It's Grizzlies' second power play of the game. As a draw won by Idaho. They couldn't clear it out, though. As Shearer rolls along the boards. Mayhew collides with Kawaguchi. Mayhew gets the puck. He'll get it to Nolan Ritchie. Ritchie over to Mayhew. He'll take a lefty shot. It goes wide. Bits bounces off of Ritchie. Now Ritchie with a shot. Saved by Wells. Richie to the far side, glides it up top for Shearer. Now across to Mayhew. Mayhew dishes it to Shearer. He'll get it over to the Brewster. Back to Shearer. Now to Mayhew. Mayhew's to the right side. He'll switch places to Shearer. Mayhew fires a shot. Saved by Wells. Idaho's back at full strength. Franklin will join the play. Mayhew loses the puck. He goes behind him. Franklin fresh out of the box. Over to Hedrick. Hedrick skates towards the middle. Now if you're off to the left, he'll take a shot and it's blocked by Shearer. As Shearer and Miller collide, the glass shakes around the area where it cracked early in the second period. As Hedrick gets poked away by Richie. Richie gets the puck, two on one. Richie skates towards the right side, and he'll take the pass, he'll take a shot, saved by Wells. Rebound goes to Idaho along the far side. Still it's cross center ice, transition game two on two. Kamatsis gets tripped up by Thomas, no call. Kalaguchi battles along the end wall with Semek. Kamatsis over there as well, wearing number 21. Studs blinded it to the right point. Hedrick over to Kanadi. He'll take a lefty shot. All goes wide. Kamatsis almost redirected it. As Kanadi over to Kamatsis. Left side take a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Semek. It's happened off the far glass. Kanadi keeps it in. He gets around Fitz. Now he gets around Power. Kanadi to the far corner. He danced around just outside the circle. Now Kanadi drives it towards his left. He'll take a lefty shot. It goes wide. Metcalf kicks it over to the corner. Kawaguchi will bounce it off the side of the net. As Idaho's Wade Murphy will roll it around. Semmick gets there before Kawaguchi and will spin it along the far boards. Kamatsi speeds it back to the corner for Kawaguchi. Back to Kamatsi's right circle. He'll drive it across to Murphy. Getting a stick in the way was power. Now Murphy with a shot and it lifts high into the air as it glanced off of power stick. And we get a whistle with 6-11 left in the second. Grizzlies desperately needed that line change, Tyson. I mean, that unit was out there for maybe two minutes. As back around the eight-minute mark, Nolan Ritchie, I mean, just passed the puck out of the air. I mean, if he wasn't playing for the Grizzlies, he'd have a good chance at making the Bees roster yeah. as he just passed that <laughs> out of the air. Really solid attempt, saved by Wells, but I really like that shift from Nolan Ritchie. Quinnipiac is the national champions of college hockey. They defeat Minnesota 3-2 in the Frozen Four. Congratulations to Quinnipiac. As Cutler throws to Luke Martin, you Grizzlies win the face off. They're skating from left to right here in the second period. Let's move it ahead towards Cutler. Bounce off his skate as the action is in the stillhead zone on the far side. Rugby type scrum as Penner over to Cutler. They get to Pfizer in the left circle. Pfizer loses his balance, but he gets it back. Pfizer will bounce it off the stillhead as Casey Johnson moves it ahead to Charm. Over to Mesiak. Mesiak gathers it at the Utah blue line. He'll enter from the left side. Mesiak feeds it out in front for Walker. Passes wide. Walker gets it and skates around Utah's net. He'll chip it over to Casey Johnson. Grizzlies get a stick in the way. Good job, good job by Pfizer. Now Johnson gets it back. He'll skate towards the corner. Martin takes it away, so he'll chip it to Pfizer. Pfizer ahead to Messner. Messner the 
Merrimack product. Skates towards left circle, like a shot, and fanned on it a little bit as it glides off the end boards and rolls towards Wells, who covers up at the far goal line just to the side of his net. 5.16 left in the second. We're tied at two on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Five sixteen left in the second period. We got a great crowd here at Maverick Center. Two good hockey teams. Guy, you having any fun? This guy said, I'm having a lot of fun. So much fun that it seems like time is just flowing by. We had that delay. It's already almost nine o'clock here, and it feels like to me like it's just mid afternoon. I've got so much energy, and so does the Grizzlies and this Maverick Center crowd. I don't think this crowd has stopped moving. I mean, they they've just been so boisterous. I mean, just so loud, rambunctious. It's the Chris Maniacs. You can use so many adjectives to describe them, and you'd never run out of words to say. Jameis will take the draw against Jade Miller. Face offs in the far circle of the still head zone. Off the draw, throw with a shot. It's blocked by Nira. Though gets it back in the high slot over to Shearer. Left side, shot goes wide. As now Messner gets blasted by Nira. Nira's been physical, actually, was Though. Messner's in the area. As Though gets pushed along the boards, Messner gets pushed by Nira. As Miller battles with Jamison, Jamison took it away from Miller. He'll glide across to Shearer. So we're tied at two. Shearer gets it to the far side. Messner has a kick past him as it goes to Jamison on the near side. He gets hit by Miller. It's been a very physical second period, testing the durability of the glass that's been that's at least still in place. Hedrick and Cutla battle with two Grizzlies behind Idaho's net. Jamison pushes Hedrick. Hedrick's got two assists tonight. His puck sports towards the far side. Franklin gathers it, sporting a beard. He'll bounce it off a of Grizzly. And it's out to the far side. Shot saved by Wells. Rebound goes to Franklin. Franklin will lift it out to center ice. As there's a collision at center ice, we get a whistle. As Kyle Pouncey and Zane Franklin. Franklin with one final shove. And then it looked like Neerum hit Shearer. And Metcalf wanted to push Neerum. Neerum's a physical presence at 6'4 and 225 pounds. <laughs> Looks like Franklin and Pouncey are both going to the penalty box. And we'll skate four on four for two minutes. Well, Willie Neerum is really lucky that he's not getting a one-way trip to the slammer because he just decked James Shearer well after the whistle had blown. And good on Garrett Metcalf for coming out and standing up for his teammate, really challenging Neerum. And don't forget, it was Garrett Metcalf that first tried to fight Chase Perry in that infamous Allen game where Metcalf gets ejected. Perry comes in and he finishes the job and fights Perry. So Garrett Metcalf, great goalie, even better teammate. Metcalf dumped it into the Grizzly zone, then just gave Pouncey a bear hug. I am still trying to figure out what Pouncey did. Why is Pouncey going to the box? I mean, he, you That's can unbelievable. Argue, you could argue that he gives a little bit of a jab on Franklin as both guys come up, but that's not enough what to really warrant do? a penalty. Kyle Pouncey's like, wait a minute. Matt matching roughing minors, 15-38 into the second period. I'm not even really sure what Franklin did deserve the penalty either. You know, I don't like to be critical of officiating or anything like that, but I, I just, I don't really understand Ryan that. Ryan Kanaswich can't believe it. He's giving John Lindner a piece of his mind. Kanaswich can't believe that Pouncey got a penalty. Kanaswich, a willing listener at this point. Kanaswich just can't believe it. Man, here's the thing, though. We're like, going to skate four take, on four for two minutes. If we're going to take Kyle Pouncey and put him in the penalty box, then we're definitely taking near him and putting him <laughs> there as well. I, I did. John's really going to get center ice. Pelton buys for Idaho against Cameron Wright. Draw one by the Steelheads. Idaho skates from right to left here in the second period as we're tied at two. Near him throws it to Kudla. Big game in the Mountain Division standings as Kudla will glide it towards the near side. Pelton buys. will cross center. He'll get it to Kawaguchi on the right side. Kawaguchi skates towards a circle. Lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to the far corner. Mayhew gets pushed along the boards by Pelton Bias. As the puck goes back towards Luke Martin. Looks like Idaho is trying to test the durability of Kyle Mayhew tonight. He's standing strong. Martin's to the right side. Skeets around Idaho's net with speed. 
Martin over to Mayhew. Mayhew back towards the left circles. The puck lifts in the air. Bounced off the back of Pelton Bice. Grizzlies across to Martin on the right. Now to make it to Martel. One timer saved by Wells. As Wright skates around the net, gets held up by Hedrick, and the whistle blows. I wonder if they're going to call it. As it looked like there was a battle but around Idaho's net. Cameron Wright got held up. I think Wright's going yeah. to the box as well. So Wright's going in for Utah. And Hedrick's Ooh. going in for Idaho. Referee John Linder looks like he wants to take control of this game. Hooking is going to be the call for Linder. And Wright gets holding the stick, I believe. 3.32 is left in the second. Two guys in the box for Idaho and two for Utah. As Wright skated around the net, Hedrick held him up. And then Wright, mm. once again, <laughs> I'm not going to sound like a homer, but what did Wright do? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> seeing it. I'm not, I, I don't have an answer for you. I'm not really sure. See. Looks like we're going to continue to skate four on four. Draws going to be in the still head zone. 3.32 left in the second period. We're tied at two. We're skating four on four. Looks like Wright and Hedrick's penalties offset. As Pfizer will take the draw against Damowski. Draw one by the Stillheads. They skate from right to left. Wright got holding the stick, and Hedrick got roughing. Stillheads cross center ice. Damowski skates down the middle. Now he burrs off to the left. He'll take a lefty shot. And he scores! What a shot by Ryan Damowski, who just fired it over the left shoulder of Garrett Metcalf. As Damowski got around Luke Martin and had just enough room to shoot. Damowski is in the house here at Maverick Center as the Steelheads have taken a 3-2 lead. Well, it was only a matter of time before Ryan Damowski woke up. I mean, the last few times that the Grizzlies have played the Steelheads, he's been held off the score sheet. Great shot. Great shot by really, Damowski. Really good shot by Damowski. And he's a special player. That's been a, great for the Steelheads all season long. That's he a four on in. four even strength goal. It's the sixth four on four goal the Grizzlies have allowed this season. Utah has scored five four on four goals. Damowski with the goal, Kanadi and Kamatsi with the assists as we're skating four on four. Mayhew will bounce off a skate of Idaho as it goes to Tho. As Nolan Ritchie gets it, he'll throw it back to Mayhew. It's Mayhew around Utah's net. He gets pushed by Mizak. Mayhew. Over towards Richie, who skates down the middle. He'll drop it back for Tho. Back to Richie in the near side. His ego cross center ice. Richie gets around the skill head, the still head. Uh, Justin Ducharm, but Ducharm gets the puck on the near side as he'll skate around Idaho's net. 2.45 left in the second. Idaho leads 3-2. to two. Ducharm gets around Pouncey or make that pen up as Ducharm fires a shot from neutral ice. Metcalf makes a stick save. Far side, Kanadi will get it across to Kumatsi. So left side, Kumatsi's. Over to Ducharm, who's battling one-on-one -on -one with Mayhew. Ducharm spins along the boards. So, over towards Richie. Richie gets the puck in the far corner. Still has to make a line change. Pouncey and Franklin are both out of the box. Franklin stays on the ice. Pouncey comes off. Richie behind Metcalf's net with 2.12 left in the second. So, glided to the far side for Mayhew. We're lifting out to center ice. Messner gets held up, so he couldn't accept the pass. Jameson skates over there. No icing. He'll chip it to the near corner. Franklin gets it, and he'll move it ahead. It goes past Miller, and it bounces off of Martin. Martin centers it. It's picked off by Haskinen, who clears it out to center ice. Sure, over to Fitz, who will bounce it off of Miller. Miller gets the puck. He'll skate towards the right circle. He'll take a lefty shot, and it goes wide. Puck goes back towards the near side. As near him, chips it across. Puck goes airborne and bounces off the far boards on one hop. Near him in the right circle, takes a righty shot. And sure, stick gets in the way as it flies out of play off the protective netting. 137 left in the second. Idaho leads 3-2. to two. Okay, so we're back to 5-on-5. Five five. All the penalty trouble is gone. For the Grizzlies, you've got a minute and 37 seconds left in the second period. Right here, right now, you need to make a statement and find a way to, in best-case scenario, score. But, I mean, at least find a way to turn the momentum in your favor heading into the second intermission. Drowns going to be in the far circle. It still has three. The Grizzlies, two. Both teams have taken 21 shots here so far. Last night, the Steelheads had 47 shots, and the Grizzlies had 28. 
As Utah wins the draw, they're in their own zone. As Tho flips it high into the air, bounces at center ice, goes past Jared Power. As Johnson will tap it towards the boards near Utah's bench at new tries. Richie gets back checked and gets his pickpocketed by Ty Pelton Bice. Now Casey Johnson to the left side, moves it to Grizzlies territory. Kawaguchi over to Johnson. Johnson to the near goal line, being shadowed by Tho. Johnson over to the corner. Tho delivers a big time hit. Johnson gets back to his feet as Jared Power will carry it out to center ice. Power with the left wing pass to Richie. Richie steps over the line. He looks to center to bounce off of Haskin and back to Richie in the corner. Now Power skates towards the left point. Power now skates towards his right. He gets pushed and knocked down. Kawaguchi skates down the middle. Shearer gets it, cuts it off. Great defensive play by James Shearer. Shearer now pushes down Kawaguchi. The fans love that. Now Walker wants a piece of Shearer. Has action in the Grizzly zone. Martel skates up like a shot on a hit some post. Grizzlies have hit at least two posts here in the second period. It's still three to two. Still, it's come back the other way. They step over the blue line. Murphy, right side shot, saved by Metcalf. And sure, clears it ahead to Penner. Penner to Pfizer. Pfizer to the left side. 30 seconds left in the period. Pfizer looks to center to Cutler. Idaho clears it out. Ducharm skates in. He's got a breakaway. Ducharm back in. Shot. He couldn't get it off. Great back check by Kyle Mayhew. Mayhew over to Penner. Penner gets blasted by Wade Murphy, but Penner moves it ahead to Cutler. He crosses the center ice. Cutler gets around Mesiak. Cutler to the left side, takes a lefty shot. A save by Wells. It bounced off the near glass. Six seconds left in the period. Penner rolls it along the boards. Three seconds left. Martin fires towards net. It gets blocked. He glides towards the near boards. The time runs out here in the second period. And what curious action here in the first 40 minutes of play. This is about as entertaining a hockey game as you'll ever see. Idaho leads Utah 3-2. to two. As Ryan Domowski found the back of the net, 16-41 in with Kanadi and Kumatsi skating the assist. Idaho's been outstanding at protecting the leads, and the Grizzlies need a third-period comeback. But, Guy, what crazy action here at Maverick Center. My goodness. I mean, just take a second to take a breath and just kind of breathe for a second because that was a flurry of action on both ends of the ice. But I got to say, great defensive play by James Shearer, saves a goal. And then maybe 20, 30 seconds after that, another great defensive play by Kyle Mayhew in his Maverick Center debut, saves yet another goal. What great action. And Kawaguchi skated in one-on-one, but Shearer and Shearer did a great job cutting off the angle and not letting letting Kawaguchi, the lefty shot, uh, the lefty shooter, get a shot off. There's the defensive play they show on the video board. Great poke check by Shearer. Then Shearer pushed down Kawaguchi. Then Zach Walker wanted a piece of James Shearer. Meanwhile, on the other end, the Rooster skated to the right side, took a shot, and hit the post. That's two posts the Grizzlies hit in the second period. Martel right there, and then earlier in the second period, Kyle Mayhew, who's looking for his first professional goal, hit the post as well. I think they're looking over video replay to see if Martel scored. I think they're going to go to video replay. Nobody is left for the locker room on the Grizzlies' side. And there's a few stillheads lingering around. I think they're going to check to see if Martel's shot crossed the goal line. It might have. I mean, it looks like it hit the crossbar. It might have gone bar, hit that back white bar in the back of the net and gone out. So they're looking it over on video replay. John Lindner, the referee, and the linesman. They're, uh, we're through two periods. Is it 3-2 stillheads or is it 3-3? I imagine it hit enough bar that... No goal will be called, at least based on what I saw live. Linder drops the tablet, and he'll come out of the box. No goal, says John Linder. It's 3-2 Stillheads after two periods. When we come back, Guy Krenz will quarterback things as the Stillheads lead by one heading into the third period. We'll come back with the Rio Tinto Kennecott intermission report in two minutes on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Great action here at the Maverick Center as after 40 minutes of play, it's the Steelheads 3 and the Grizzlies 2. Third and final game of a three-game set in the final meeting between the Grizzlies and the Steelheads this, se this season. As I'm Guy Carenza alongside Tyson Whiting. As I mentioned, it's been a lot of fun and it did not take long to get the party started. It's just a minute and four seconds into the first period. Idaho's Ducharme scores his 14th goal of the year from Hedrick and Kudla, making it a 1-0 Idaho lead. But the Grizzlies would respond on a sneaky shot from the near circle by Dylan Fitz, 5-16 into the first. He picks up his 17th goal of the season from Keaton Jamison. Now it's just one of those ones where Dylan Fitz has his back turned to the net and just spins around and rifles one towards the net. And Dylan Wells didn't see it, and he didn't have a chance to stop it as it had eyes and found the back of the net. Then, 6.43 into the first period, Jordan Martell gets his 17th goal of the season and makes it a 2-1 game in favor of the Grizzlies. Nolan Ritchie picks up his first point as a Grizzly and his first point as a pro. So welcome to the big leagues to Nolan Ritchie. That made it a 2-1 game, and that's where we sat after 20 minutes of play. In the second period, Idaho scored two goals. 9.58 into the second period. It was Jade Miller getting his 14th goal of the season. A tip out in front. Not much Garrett Metcalf could have done to save that puck. And that comes from Hedrick and Mesiak. So that made it a 2-2 game. And then 16.41 into the first. Ryan Domowski, just a laser of a shot from the near side. I don't think there's a goal turner in this league that could have made a save on that shot as the mouse was in the house, scoring his 29th goal of the season from Kamal from Kanadi. And come on, Tease. So the Steelheads, after 40 minutes of play, take a 3-2 lead to the locker room. But in the second period, Utah had the shot edge 13-10 over the Steelheads. But in this game, Idaho has the edge by 1, 22-21. Idaho is though for 2 on the power play, as are the Grizzlies. We saw some penalty trouble from both sides in the second period. As there was a weird sequence of events where Zane Franklin and Kyle Pouncey got caught up on the far boards, uh, Franklin got a penalty for roughing, as did Kyle Pouncey. Now, we don't want to sound like homers, but we're not entirely sure what Kyle Pouncey did there. But nonetheless, we skated four on four, and that is when the Damowski goal was scored, was on four on four. And so that open ice benefited the Steelheads, and they cashed in. Owen Hedrick and Cameron Wright also got two minutes for hooking for Hedrick and holding the stick for Wright, 16-28 in. Those penalty offset, so as I mentioned before, when the Damowski goal was scored, it was four on four. Garrett Metcalf got the starting net for the Grizzlies tonight. The Salt Lake City native and the hometown hero has made 19 saves on 22 shots. Dylan Wells makes his second start for the Steelheads. He stopped 19 of 21. But Tyson, I mean... <laughs> It'd be a crime if we didn't talk about that final action to end the second period, just end-to-end -end action. The Grizzlies going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best team in the league. Had a few chances to score, hit two posts in yeah. that second period. you got to think the Grizzlies at league meetings here this summer are going to petition to make the Nets just a little bit wider. <laughs> that, would be, that would get the Grizzlies a lead. They'd have two more goals here uh, through two periods. I mean, Mayhew missed it by that much. He didn't miss it by much. It got past Dylan Wells, and so... It was one of those that just the post saved Wells there. And then late, as everybody, I think a lot of people are watching the 
Walker and Shearer kerfuffle. <laughs> Martel skated to the right side and had a good look, and he hit the post as well. They checked on video replay to see if Martel and his shot would have crossed the goal line, but they say it didn't, and Idaho leads 3-2. to two. So just like that, two posts really made the difference in the game, and I think if you're a Grizzlies fan, you have to love the Grizzlies' effort here through two periods. And, you know, the, really the difference right now in terms of goals that were scored was Damowski's. I'm not sure there's much Luke Martin could have done with it. It was a one-on-one where Damowski skated to the middle. Martin had him shadowed and almost looked like Martin was just like, I'm not letting you cut down the middle. You're either going to veer to the left or veer to the right. I think if Martin had some sort of angle where he could choose where Damowski was going to go, he would have favored Damowski to go to his right as Damowski is a lefty shooter. But it didn't take really much room for Damowski. He just kind of got around Martin just to a spot in the left circle where he could get a shot off. And it was a beauty that got over the left shoulder of Garrett Metcalf. And well, that was a good play in the redirection out in front. You know, on the on Idaho's second goal, the shot that was taken by Hedrick and Miller redirected out in front. Really, it's two goals by Idaho and really two good plays. There's not much a Grizzlies defensive unit can do about it. Yeah, I mean, Tyson, I think about that Damowski goal. I mean, it was defended really quite yeah. beautifully by Martin. It's just Brian Damowski said, okay, try me. And so he just rifled a, a superstar-style shot. And like I said, there's not many goaltenders in the league that make a save on that kind of shot. I don't think anybody in this league does. And you think about Ryan Damowski now in 69 games, has 29 goals and 36 assists for 65 points. So he's certainly a force to be reckoned with, and it was only a matter of time before he found his way on the score sheet. As I mentioned before in the second period, he was held off the score sheet in the last few times the Grizzlies faced the Steelheads. The I mean, in the second period, you look at the scoring chances, 10-5 to 5 in favor of the Grizzlies. So now. the Grizzlies really were having their way in the Steelheads zone, but they got to find a way to beat Wells. But I, I like what the Grizzlies were doing offensively. He's on four giveaways to Idaho's too. And speaking of Damowski, the 69 games he's played in, he's the only Steelhead to appear in every game. A.J. White, the Stillheads captain, is missing for the first time this season. So Ryan Damowski is the lone Ironman for the Stillheads this year. But despite that, the Stillheads have really made very few roster moves for the you know this season, which is uh, amazing considering how much talent they have on the roster. That they, they didn't just lose half their guys to AHL call-ups. And I know when I was over the in Boise in late December, uh, the one road trip I did make this season, it seemed like the Stillheads were talking about how going into January and February, how they were a little bit worried that over the next few months that they would lose maybe half the roster to the AHL. Well, they really didn't lose that many players, maybe one or two guys who have been up and down with them. Um, otherwise, the roster has stayed pretty consistent, and that's been a big part as to why they've been able to maintain the success they had early in the season and kind of carry it through the fact that they pretty much had the same roster throughout the season. Yeah, I mean, you think about the Steelheads. I mean, a lot of these names that we see here in this game today are the same names that we saw back in October when the yep. season first started. So, I mean, the one noticeable name that's off the sheet here is, of course, Remy Poirier, who's up, uh, you know, up and about. But, I mean, for the Grizzlies, it seems like it's quite the opposite, where it seems like it's just, just this revolving door where it's like every week you can see somebody new. Yeah. I mean, we already see three new faces and a returning one here at the Maverick Center this week. But, I mean, I think the Grizzlies as a whole have done a really good job of just being resilient and having that next man up mentality where, okay, I mean, if you're suited up and you're going to go play, we expect you to make a difference. And every single guy that's been called upon has done just that. It'll be fun to see who makes that game-changing play for the Grizzlies in the third period. Idaho leads Utah 3-2. to two. And if you're Idaho, do you get that insurance goal early in the third period and really put Utah back on their heels and make the Grizzlies play catch-up? I mean, it's one of those things where... A team like Idaho, they've had a lot of leads going into the third period, and they've really held strong for the majority of those games. I think the Steelheads record when leading after two periods is, what, it's something like 46-2. and two. That's the Steelheads record when leading after two periods. So they've done a great job of protecting leads here late in games. Well, I mean, that's certainly – I mean, that's that speak for itself. But, I mean, you think about the Grizzlies, on the other hand, they had a really good record leading after two, and then Idaho found a way on Friday night to come back and win that game. And I think with the way that the Grizzlies are playing, we could see that same thing, but flipped here today where Idaho leads after two, but the Grizzlies – rally back in the third period and find a way to win this game. I mean, I, I look at that second period. I mean, the Grizzlies really did play a solid second period. They just couldn't find a way 
to put the buck in the back of the net. I mean, they came very, very close. And like I said, the scoring chances speak that for that 10-5 to five in favor of the Grizzlies. So I think if the Grizzlies continue to play like they did in the second period, it's only a matter of time before they get back on the board. When we come back to the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report, we'll go over some scores from around the league, especially the Mountain Division games and where the Grizzlies currently sit in the playoff picture. It's Idaho 3, Utah 2. We're back in two minutes on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. The Frozen Four National Championship game was tonight. Quinnipiac defeated Minnesota 3-2 in overtime as Quinnipiac is the 2023 national champions. The 2022 national champions were the University of Denver Pioneers. Two of those players currently reside with the Grizzlies. Kyle Mayhew and Cameron Wright. Wright only played one season with Denver and was a national champion. Before that, he played at Bowling Green State. So congratulations to Quinnipiac. Did you ever find out where Quinnipiac is, is where they where that university is. You know, I, I mean, we might as well just pump that into Google right now and find out. I mean, I, I'm, oh, I got the answer right here. What do we got? Hamden, Connecticut. Yeah. That's where Quinnip man. Quinnipiac University is. So the state of Connecticut has the men's basketball championship team, the UConn Huskies, and they also have the hockey national champions, the Quinnipiac, uh, whatever they are. I don't I know. Only three to two. I've heard of them every now and then. Sometimes they're like a 15 seed in the NCAA basketball tournament. Some games involving Mountain Division teams, although oddly enough, I don't recall any former Quinnipiac players appearing for the Grizzlies over the last five years. Kansas City defeated Tulsa 6-0. Grizzlies were hoping for a Tulsa victory as Tulsa won 4-2 last night. And so with that, Kansas City now has 70 standings points as the Mavericks have... Three games left on their schedule. They play at Allen next Wednesday, and they host Cincinnati on Friday and Saturday to close out the regular season. So Kansas City passes Utah and Rapid City in the standings, and they're now tied with Wichita for third place in the Mountain Division. Tiebreaker, Tyson. Looks like they have more regulation wins. Kansas City now would move up to 26. Wichita has 23. So Kansas City third in the Mountain Division right now. Wichita would remain in fourth. And the Grizzlies, if they end up losing here today, would be on the outside looking in. Three games for the Grizzlies left in the regular season after tonight. Allen gets a 5-3 to three victory. Allen's got four games left in the regular season after tonight, so we're kind of penciling Allen into a playoff spot. 
A uh, couple of their games are against teams towards the bottom of the standings. And so Allen defeats Savannah 5-3. to three. Hank Crone scored three goals tonight, and he leads the league in goals. Crone gets his 46th, 47th, and 48th goals this season. Former Grizzlies defenseman Chris Maleri had two goals for Allen as the Americans defeat the Ghost Pirates 5-3, to three, the final there. And so Allen is now, well, they just extend their lead in second place, 73 standings points, which are three more than Wichita and Kansas City for that time for third. So guy in this playoff race, I think we're already penciling Allen in for clinching a playoff spot here in the next few days. Yeah, I mean, Tyson, you look at the amount of points that they have, sole possession of the second spot in the Mountain Division, and the fact that they've got more games in hand than anybody else. I mean, they're certainly not clinched mathematically, but they're pretty much a shoe in for at least a spot in the Mountain Division playoff race. And so you think about Allen being penciled in, two spots remain in the Mountain Division. And so coming to this game, I said that this isn't necessarily a must-win game for the Grizzlies. Well, now given the results from the other teams around the league, I almost want to say that while the Grizzlies do have those tiebreakers against the other two teams in Wichita and Kansas City, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a must-win game for the Grizzlies, not only because of the playoff race, but just to build some momentum with the Tulsa Oilers coming into town next week. I remember, Tulsa did get a victory last night, and they could play the role of spoiler here at Maverick Center next week. When we come back in one minute, we'll have third-period action as Idaho leads Utah 3-2 as well. The final 20 minutes of regulation coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Big game in the Mountain Division standings as Idaho leads Utah 3-2. to two. The Stillheads are 46-2 when leading after two periods. And the Grizzlies are trying to reverse that trend here with a third period comeback. As shots have been pretty close to even tonight. 22 shots for Idaho, 21 for Utah. Guy. What's going to be big for the Grizzlies here in the third period? Well, the Grizzlies can capture lightning in a bottle. And when I say that, I mean that final two minutes of the second period and just capture that and release it here in the third period. I really feel like the Steelheads, or the Grizzlies had the Steelheads on their heels in the final two minutes of play. So if the Grizzlies can play like that to start this third period and get that next goal and tie us up at three, I think that would be huge. But for the Grizzlies, you just got to continue to play that possession game. I really think that the Grizzlies have done a good job of winning faceoffs and having possession in this game. As a result of that, they've been neck and neck with one of the best teams in the league. Idaho leads three to two as the Stillheads will be skating from left to right as we see it from high top section 114. Grizzlies will be skating from our right to our left as Tyler Penner will take the draw against Ty Pelton Vice. Cutler and Vice are out there as well as Martin and Mayhew as the draw won by the Grizzlies. Cutler glides at the Martin near the Utah bench. Martin moves ahead to center ice for Penner. Penner loses it as Ty Pelton Vice gains center ice and he dumps it in. Metcalf behind his net will glide it towards the near side as Brandon Cutler will skate north-south. Now flip it high into the air. Pfizer trying to glove it at the Idaho blue line. He falls down. Puck goes back to new tries. Penner over to Mayhew. Back to Martin. He'll chip it across. Cutler over to Pallant to Penner. Try to get it back to Cutler. Skated over there. Hedrick will move it back to the Utah blue line where it's regathered by Martin. Martin skates down the middle. Now drops to the right circle. Take a shot. And it's blocked by Bice. Now Martin looks to center it. Shot. Saved by Wells. Idaho comes back the other way. They cross center ice three on three. As Wade Murphy steps over the line, left point, drops it off. Lefty shot by Bice goes wide. Puck glides towards the near side. Cutler gets over to Martin. Martin crosses center ice and he'll drive a shot. Saved by Wells. Wells will move it to Haskin on the near side. Grizzlies make their first line change of the third period. Pass head to Domowski. It flies off his stick and goes into the Grizzlies zone. 
As Metcalf over to throw, back to Cameron Wright, who tried to get to the rooster. Right, lose the puck. Now left point, lefty shot, saved by Metcalf. And the puck stays in play. The shot was taken by Justin Mesiak. As though on the near side, gets the puck. As he'll lift it high into the air, bounces at the Idaho blue line. As goes back to Nolan Ritchie, rolls it around for the rooster. He lets it go past him as it glides along the far wing boards. Ducharme will bounce it off a sheer, and it goes to center ice. Though at the center ice logo, moves ahead to Martell. Back towards Ritchie, but Idaho gets a stick in the way. So he'll bounce it off of Martell. As Martell tries to locate it, Aisken in. We'll move it ahead as Ido still in their own zone as Demowski feeds it across. Here I'm across the center ice with it, one on four. He'll dump it to the corner as fans take up a let's go Grizzlies chant. Near him, throws up top to Miller. One timer goes wide. That was a blast from the left point. Kanadi right side, takes a wrist shot, stick saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Kamatsis. Demetrius is his first name. They'll tap it off of Richie as it flies in the air and bounces in the right corner as Miller gets over to Kanadi. Back to the right side for Near him. Now Franklin back to Near him on the right side. They'll get it to Franklin behind Utah's net. He'll skeet towards the far side near him. Centering pass shot goes wide. They try to sneak it in front towards Miller. Miller gets it back on the right side. So he'll skeet towards the point. Now feed it up top to Kamatsi. So take a lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Tho. As Tho on the far side will chip it across to Cameron Wright, who couldn't crowd the bouncing puck as it skips to Nick Kanadi at center ice. Kanadi back in his own zone. will start the attack in the right wing. And so get around Messner. Now Kanadi skates down the middle. He's got great speed. High slot shot saved by Metcalf. Fitz will tap and pass Franklin. Puck kind of skipping on the ice like it's on a lake. As Fitz crosses the center ice, he'll lift it in. Franklin delivers a hit on Fitz. As Wells throws it to the far side. As Hedrick will tap it off the glass. And it goes to the Utah blue line where Kyle Mayhew gets it. He'll feed it to Fitz. It goes past him onto Jamison at the Idaho blue line. He'll roll it around slowly as Cudlup. Collides with Messner, and the puck goes back to the far side for Zach Walker. He'll tap it over. Fitz gets it on the turnover. Now Walker and Fitz hit the ice. Fitz on two knees. Messner battles with Kudla. So glide it to Jamison behind the goal line. Jamison in the far corner as he loses it for Zach Walker. It's a strong two-way forward. As the puck's still in the stillhead zone, it goes to Hedrick. who will move it ahead to Walker across the center ice. Walker steps over the blue line. He'll dump it to the corner as Jamison delivers a hit on Walker. As Luke Martin in the far side gathers it. Martin wearing number 44. He gets hit by Walker. He's delivered a ton of big hits here so far tonight. As Idaho in the offensive zone. As Mesiak gets around Mayhew. Shot saved by Metcalf. And the Salt Lake City native holds on. 16-44 left in the third. Idaho still leads 3-2. to two. We saw a lot of action late in the second period. We saw a lot of scoring chances. But we also saw physicality kind of ramp up as the period ended. I wonder if the memo for both teams is just to kind of play physical but tone it back a little bit, try and scale back on the penalties and play a disciplined game here. Draws, give me in the right circle. Justin Mesiak will take the draw against Tyler Penner. That's a draw one by the Grizzlies. Samick will skate around his net. Jacobs' his first name as Utah lifts it into the air. Goes deep in the stillhead zone. Cutler gets it. Wells in the last second decides to play it behind his net. He'll feed it to the far side as Murphy will tap it off the glass. Ducharm gets it one on two. Ducharm gets around Semic. Left side shot. And it goes wide as the puck glides along the boards on the near side. Haskin and back in his own end will glide it across to Johnson. Johnson gives it back to Haskin and who skates down the middle. Haskin and will cross center ice in the right wing and he'll chip it around the wall as Johnson skates towards left point to keep it in, displaying good speed. Ducharm in the corner, gets it back up top for Johnson, across to Haskin on the right side, over to Murphy, back to Haskin and he'll give it to Johnson on the left side, take a lefty shot and it goes wide off the boards, it hits the back of the net. Now it goes back over Jade Miller in the far corner. Collides with Pfizer. Miller is a strong two-way forward as Murphy glides it up top for Johnson. He'll feed it to Ducharm. He swings and misses. Now right side, Ducharm backhand shot saved by Metcalf. And the puck goes out to center ice. Kanadi along the near side. We'll move it ahead to Murphy. Grizzlies make a line change. Murphy left side. He'll take a backhand shot saved by Metcalf. And the net gets dislodged as we get a whistle of 15.08 left in regulation. Well, it seems like right now, Tyson... The Steelheads have the momentum. I mean, the Grizzlies are kind of on their heels right now. So certainly that whistle was welcomed by the Grizzlies. But the Grizzlies need to find a way to get out of their own zone, reignite the transition game, and go back on offense. Draws going to be in the far circle. Fans very vocal here tonight. we got a great Saturday night crowd. Cameron Wright will take the draw against Jade Miller. The Grizz Maniacs are alive in full force. Linesman talking with Cameron Wright and Jade Miller. Idaho 27 shots to the Grizzlies 23. 
As the puck is finally dropped, Ido wins the faceoff. Nira battles with Martel. Martel gets it and goes to Luke Martin. Now to right, back to Martel, left wing. Martel gets over to Richie. He'll take a shot. And good back check by Domowski. Richie couldn't get a shot off. As Domowski will clear it out to center. It bounced off the linesman, Andrew Collins, and it goes back to Martin in the Grizzly zone. It's still blinded to Mayhew. Across to Richie on the near side. Richie crosses center ice. Now he steps over the blue line. He'll lift the puck high into the air. Bounces off the protective netting. As looked like he was at the Ido blue line. He wanted to lift it in the air, have it bounce off the glass, chase after it, and do whatever he would have, would have done with it. But puck goes out of play. Just watching Nolan Richie play, I mean, there's a reason that this guy has 70 points in 67 games with the Wheat Kings. I mean, he's just, he's like a magician out there. He's just making something happen out of nothing. Got silky smooth hands and a really nice shot. An excellent addition to this Grizzlies team. That's a pretty good, cool logo, too. The Brandon Wheat Kings. Oh, yeah. the historic WHL team. Grizzlies have picked up a ton of players from the WHL over the years. Brian Kanasiewicz himself played in the WHL. That's right. He's kicked out of the faceoff circle. And Richie's going to take the draw. Right will settle on the right wing. Martel to the left. Up top is Martin and Mayhew. As the draw won by the Grizzlies, Wright loses it, and it goes to Ido. Ryan Domowski, who's got the deciding goal so far, as he scored with about three minutes left in the third period. He'll cross center ice and dump it in. Luke Martin throws it across to Mayhew. Kyle's his first name. Mayhew gets pushed along the boards by Miller, but Mayhew moves it ahead to the rooster. Martell across to Richie. It bounced off his stick. As now it goes to Martin. Martin along the near side battles with Neerham. Martin feeds it across to the far corner as it bounced off the two news sign. And hopefully they'll show some highlights of tonight's game as Martel over to right, right side. Righty shot goes wide. As the puck glides towards Martin in the left point. Martin gets around Willie near him. As Martin over towards Richie. Richie in the left side. He'll glide towards his right now. Feed it to Sure. Woodsheimer and it's blocked. Ido comes up with it. Willie near him crosses center ice. Three on three. Still, let's get it over to the left side. Idaho around the net. Kamatsi stops on a dime in the far corner. Now go to Franklin. Right wing, left wing. Righty shot. And it's blocked. Puck goes back to Kamatsi, sit neutral ice, he'll dump it in and come off the ice. As sure, over in the near corner, collides with the glass as Ty Pelton Bice pushed him into it. Franklin gets held up by Martin. As Martin engulfs Franklin, who's not very tall. Do charm skates towards the left point. I know something about not being tall. As Martin picks the pass off in the corner, so he'll lift it in the air. Sadly, Guy knows something about not being tall as well. As Hedrick goes, throws the Ducharm hand pass. Jamison to the right side, swings and misses. Now the puck goes back to neutralize. Tho dumps it in. Grizzlies touch up on what I believe is a delayed offside. Fans wanted a call away from the whistle, but none to be had. 13 15s left in the third. It's the Steelheads three, and the Grizzlies two. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. 13-15 left in regulation. Draw's going to be at neutralized after the Grizzlies were called for offside. I know it's up by one. What guy? What have you seen so far in the third? Well, it seems like the start of the third period, Tyson, all the action was in the Grizzlies zone. It seems like the Idaho Steelers are trying to use offense as defense and just kind of keep the play in the Grizzlies zone so the Grizzlies can't go the other way and score. For the Grizzlies, you need to find a way to, like I said before, reignite that transition game and find yourself regaining possession uh, here in this third period. If possession's been tilted in Idaho's favor, you need to get that to at least a 50-50 split if you want a chance to come back and win this game. Looks like they're working on a piece of glass over near the Zamboni Tunnel. Hopefully it's not going to cause another delay. We had like a 15-minute delay early in the second period. The draw is going to be near the Stillhead's bench. It's interesting to see mid-game Ryan Kness, which shift up his defensive pairings. Martin and Mayhew have been paired up, and I think it's been a really good pairing for the Grizzlies here. 
Yeah, I mean, Luke Martin has been great ever since he redone the Grizzlies uniform. And for Kyle Mayhew, I mean, he's looking like a veteran out there. I mean, he's playing like a pro, making smart decisions, jumping in offensively, making great plays defensively as well. Draw one by the Stillheads. They skate from left to right here in the third period as Hedrick moves it over to Murphy. Murphy battling with Mayhew. Both guys were number six. The puck goes to the far side. Cublet lets Fitz touch it. Delayed offside. Now Idaho's onside as Cublet will tap it off the near corner. As Utah skating from right to left here in the third period. Fitz gets it. He gets around Hedrick. Fitz left side. Shot that goes wide. Now off the rebound. Messner with a shot. And Wells kicks his net open as we get a whistle with 12.50 left in the third. That was a desperation. I don't know where the puck is, but I'm going to stop play right now. Well... I mean, that is what it is, but I think about Dylan Fitz. This is not a guy that's known for having great hands or dangling around defenders, but what a, what a special move he made into the steelhead zone, gains steelhead blue, and just dangles around the defense and takes a shot. Uh, the only thing he could have done better is hit the net. Yeah, great move by Dylan Fitz, and as you mentioned, he's more of a north-south player, just kind of not a whole lot of fancy moves. Messner over to the near side, and that's when, or, you know, that's when the net got kicked open as Messner was looking for the second chance. Idaho wins the draw. Pelton Bice gets to the center red line, and he'll dump it in. Metcalf behind his net. He'll throw it to the far side for Penner. Now to Pfizer. Pfizer will skate out to center ice. He gets back checked and taking the puck away is Murphy. Last night's hero. Murphy skates towards the right side, being channeled by Martin. Murphy now to the left side. That's will get it up top for Haskin. And right side, Haskin will take a righty shot. Saved by Metcalf. And Garrett holds on with 12.22 left in the third. Well, Tyson, Garrett Metcalf has been great all game long. And really, if the Grizzlies are going to have a chance to come back and win this game, he's going to continue to have to perform at an elite level, and he's done that so far in this game. But, I mean, really, the Grizzlies all season long have had excellent goaltending. Three really elite talents in net in Metcalf, Parikh, and Minor. Goaltending is going to take him far, and potentially into the playoffs. Draw on the right circle. Damowski will take it against Nolan Ritchie. Ritchie was the center with the Brandon Meat Kings. Draw one by the Grizzlies. This, though, gets around... Sure, and lift it high into the air. It goes just under the video board as Nolan Ritchie gets near the Idaho bench, and he'll skate into the, from the right side. He'll dump it as it mounts off the end boards as it goes over to Domowski. Now it's Amesiak who couldn't handle it, though. We'll move it to center ice as it goes to Walker. He crosses center, and he'll dump it in as Sure chases after it. As he'll spin it over to the rooster, Jordan Martell on the near side, deep in the Grizzly zone. Martell gets around Tho. He drops it off for Tho, wearing number 28. Tho over to Sure. As sure back to center ice for Richie, who steps over the line to the left side. He'll tap it off the chartway sign around the net. Sarusa to the left side, back to throw. One Simon is blocked by Walker. Skating over is Johnson. Johnson crosses center ice. He gets back checked by Tho. Johnson will blind towards his left. Great defensive play by Tho getting back. As Richie steps over the line on side, tried to drop it off for right. He was skating the other way. Now Richie to the right side, throws it across for Thomas. Thomas to the left, he shot and goes wide, but glides along the far wing boards and it goes to center ice. Semic back in Grizzlies territory, will spill it, will peel off into his own zone, gets over to Thomas, back to Messner. Nick Messner spins along the wall as Jamison skates towards the right corner to get it. Now he gets up top for Semic, across to Thomas. He'll take a lefty shot, and it's blocked by Idaho's Willie Nero. As Kawaguchi gets to the Idaho blue line, he'll move it ahead. It goes back to Messner at new try. So throw it back to Semic. Over to Thomas. He throws the center ice for Jamison. Jamison, left wing pass to Messner. Messner skates down the middle. Backhand shot goes wide. But glides towards the near wing boards. Skating over is Mayhew. He'll throw it to the near goal line. Jamison back to Mayhew. He'll take a lefty shot. Saved by Wells. And some pushing and shoving. Dylan fits over there. As he was pushing with Jade Miller. Nick Kanadi skates over there. Kanadi, not a very big guy, but he wanted to step in and take on Fitz. I don't think any penalties are going to come of it. 10.36 left in the third. That's a crowd fired up a little bit. <laughs> Crowd's been fired up all throughout. Even during the 15 minutes of late, doing the YMCA. Grizzlies fans are the best fans in the league. I mean, they are always making noise. I mean, they're so involved in the game. You can really feel the passion just bleeding out into the atmosphere here at Maverick Center. I mean, just what a great crowd, night in and night out. You can feel the playoff atmosphere as you're driving in yeah. here. You could look in the parking lot, and you could see playoff atmosphere all around. You know how else you can tell that it's playoff time? The weather's getting warmer, finally. It's about time. <laughs> Draws over in the near circle of the Steelhead zone. Idaho leads 3-2. to two. No one scored here so far in the third period. 
Still adds him out. Shot the Grizzlies 28 to 24. Cutler will take the drive. He's got Miser to his left and Penner to his right. Draw one by Idaho. Penner got hit on his keister. Make that Cutler. Cutler gets back to his feet. Idaho clears it out to center. Miser races down to the Grizzlies zone to get it. He's being shadowed by Franklin. Miser over to Martin. And so get it to Cutler. As Brandon Cutler skates the new tries, he crosses center. He'll fire a shot. Saved by Wells. Cutler gets the rebound of the near side. He gets spun around by Hedrick. Cutler battles. Now goes up top for Mayhew. Mayhew fires a lefty shot that bounces off the boards. Puck bounces off a of Grizzly and James Shearer. Pfizer over there as well. As goes over to Hedrick. Hedrick back to Cutler behind Idaho's net. He'll move it ahead as Idaho will carry it out of the zone. Pass to the left for Ducharm. He crosses center ice. He'll lightly dump it in as he still has to make a line change. Mayhew lifts it across to Martin. Ooh, couldn't get the bouncing puck, Mar- but Martel does. Martel skates down the middle. He crosses center ice. Left wing. Martel steps over the blue line with speed. And so get around the net. Back to Richie in the far corner. Back to Martel, who gets pushed by Haskinen. Now right to the right side. Gets up top for Martin, who slides it across to Schur, but the puck exits the zone. Schur at center ice. Gets back checked by Murphy. Murphy takes it away. Skates towards the right corner. Murphy over to Domowski. Martin cuts him off. Good defensive play by Martin. As it goes over to the far side. Right back to Luke Martin. He will tap it off the stick, and it goes to Richie out in front of Utah's net. He'll give it to Shearer, who glides it back to Martin. Martin will slice it out to center ice. Puck flies off the stick of Mesiak and goes out of play as it looks like it goes into the Zamboni Tunnel over there in the stillhead zone. 9.05 left in the third. It somehow stayed in the spectator area. Guy sporting a playoff beard. Looks like two guys sporting playoff beards. We'll get the puck, and they'll look at it. Draw's going to be at center ice. They know they're getting some TV time. They look at themselves on the video board. As a draw one by Idaho, they'll fire a slow shot back to Metcalf. They'll tap it off the end boards. Idaho gets it right side. Miller looks to center to Walker. Tapped off a those stick. Keeping in is Kumatsi. Surround the net for Yamamoto for Kawaguchi. He'll take a shot, and it's saved by Metcalf. Now Kanadi will glide it towards his left as Kamatsi takes a shot, and it's blocked as it hit off a stanchion. As Walker around the net, he's to the left side, being channeled by Jamison. Walker now skates back towards the near side, wraparound shot, and he fanned on it. Puck glides towards the right point. Kanadi with a lefty blast, and it goes wide. As Kamatsi over to the left side, so he'll skate towards his right. Kamatsi is now to the right circle. He skates towards the corner. Fitz pushes him. Kamatsi keeps his feet. Fitz takes the puck away from him as both guys hold each other up. Kawaguchi around the net. He gets spun around by Tho. Now Kawaguchi behind the net. He gets the puck. He'll tap it up top for Kamatsi. So he'll fake a shot. Kamatsi will roll it around the boards. Kawaguchi gets pushed by Tho. Now it goes over to Walker. Back to Kawaguchi. Walker goes down. Kawaguchi spins it around from one corner to the other. As Hedrick gets pushed by Messner. Tho takes the puck. As Tho gets around Kawaguchi but loses it, neutral ice. Idaho lifts it back in as it tapped off the right corner on two hops of the ice. As Shearer slices it across as Jamison over to Cutler trying to glove it. It bounces off the glass. Cutler gathers it, center ice, and he'll dump it to the left side. Cutler with a lefty shot that goes wide as Ducharm will bounce it off of Penner and it goes into the Stillheads bench. 7.31 left in the third. Draw's going to be in the Stillhead zone. But nobody scored here so far in the third period as Idaho still leads 3-2. to two. It's just a really tight game, Tyson. I mean, two teams that really just know each other inside now, the 18th meeting of this season. I mean, it really seems like we're kind of deadlocked here in the third period, but I see a little sense of urgency from the Grizzlies. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Cutler with a shot that goes wide. Martin battles in the narrow corner as Idaho will lift it towards Patrick Cudlup, and it goes past Cutler out to center ice. Cutler will feed it across the throw. And as Tho gains center ice, and he'll whip it around the boards. Pfizer chases it in the corner as he collided with Hedrick. Now left side, Cutler with a shot that's blocked. This goes back to Ducharme. He'll tap it off the far boards as Bice can reach it. As though Tyler Penner gets the stick held up as he pushes along with Ducharme. As Puck's still in play, Cutler will bounce it off of Bice and taking this Hedrick, who will skate around Luke Martin as Penner continues to collide with Ducharme. As Hedrick gets the Grizzlies territorial fire, neutral zone shot. And Metcalf gets it about waist high and holds on as Ducharme and Penner continue to exchange words near the Grizzlies bench. 
6.47 left in the third. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Well, Grizzlies fans are very vocal, and they certainly voiced their opinion of their officiating crew here tonight. But for the Grizzlies, you just got to keep battling and find a way. I mean, sometimes you're not going to get any help from the officials. So you got to take care of business on your own, five on five. And in a gritty game like this against one of your biggest rivals, it's going to be a slugfest. It's going to be a battle towards the end, and the Grizzlies are going to have to find a way to tie it up and gut it out. What great action here at Maverick Center. Don't forget, Utah will be home against uh, against the Tulsa Oilers for three game sets starting with a Bud Light College night, 7 10 face off. The last AFCU Friday of the regular season will be next Friday at 7 10. And then Saturday's fan appreciation night and Star Wars night. Ido wins the face off. Franklin lifts it out to the high slot. Still has to keep it in as Franklin pushes Cameron right along the boards. Misant throws it back to Haskin in as he still has to want to play a puck possession game with a one goal lead. Johnson out to Domowski. Now Franklin will skate into the offensive zone as he'll dump it to the corner. As Franklin chases after it, Sure, it's pushed by Franklin, but Sure rolls it back to the Rooster on the far side. Rooster goes to Richie across the center ice. Richie enters from the left side as he'll dump it to the corner. Haskin does a good job of cutting off Richie's pursuit. As Idaho will get it out to center ice, Domowski chases after it. Sure as well. Mayhew gets there first, but he overskates the puck. Domowski looks to center it. Great defensive play by Sure to poke it away. Now Murphy to the left side across to Misiat. Right side. Back down the middle for Domowski. He'll take a right wing shot and it goes wide as Mayhew got a piece of it with a stick. As Misiak over in the left side. Sure shadowing him. As Misiak over to Murphy around the net. Murphy getting held up by Mayhew as Murphy gets pushed. Murphy throws it back towards Kawaguchi who has to chase after it along the far boards. Kawaguchi gets it. He gets it back to Murphy. Shot. And it gets kicked away as Mayhew got a piece of it. As Kawaguchi. Gets the puck on the right side as he gets around Mayhew. They try to chip it out in front of Bice. It glanced off of Mayhew's stick and rolls towards the left point. Kalaguchi, five and a half minutes left in regulation. Gets the puck. He'll skate towards the near side. Kalaguchi gets up top for Kanati. He'll take a lefty shot and it goes wide. Kamatsis in the left point gets it. He'll slice it across, but it exits the zone. Kanati back across the side. Grizzly sneaking a line change as Kanati takes a left wing shot and it goes wide. Idaho could have been smart to let Utah t- try to touch the puck up there for too many men. As Idaho will cross center ice over to Kalaguchi, swings and misses on a one-timer from the slot. As right, he just throws a right-wing pass to Fitz. Fitz gets towards the right circle, take a righty shot, and it's blocked. Lots of blocked shots by Idaho in the third period. Now in the slot, Fitz with a shot, and it's blocked by Bice, who clears it out to center. Martin back at center ice has it. He'll backpedal towards the Grizzlies' blue line. He'll tap it off a of Willie near him. It goes deeper in the Grizzlies zone. Nick Messner throws the center ice. Fitz couldn't reach it. This goes back to Owen Hedrick. He'll skate after it deep in the stillhead zone. Four and a half minutes left in regulation. Idaho leads three to two. As Hedrick skates down the middle. He'll throw a left wing pass. It connects. Idaho enters the offensive zone. Left wing shot. And it's blocked by Sure. Stick and flies out of play as Jade Miller had a good look from the left side. 422 left in the third. It's a still heads three in the Grizzlies two. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies tying uh, hockey network. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Here at Maverick Center, Idaho leads 3-2. to two. 422 is left in the third period. Guy, what stood out to you? Well, Tyson, for the Grizzlies, in a game that's been super tight, they've had their offensive chances. And I really like what the Grizzlies' defensive pairings have done in this game, most notably the Shearer and Martin pairing, is a pairing that has eaten up a ton of minutes in this game, but really has been quite defensively sound. Draws in the Grizzlies zone in the far circle. Miller will take it against Tyler Penner. And 
the draw, won by Utah is Mayhew. Slice ahead to Cutler across the center ice. Cutler gains the offense line, and Hedrick takes it away as Cutler lost the puck. As puck goes back to center ice, Cutler gets it back. He's being back checked by Walker. Walker loses the stick as Cutler glides it across to Martin. Martin will cross center ice. He collides with Niram as Miller with a big time hit to F- uh, he hit Pfizer pretty good, but Pfizer keeps his feet. Now Pfizer has a bounce off him as the puck deep in the stillhead zone. Hedrick skates around the net, so glide it towards Niram, and it goes out to center ice. Cutler regathers it as he'll peel back to his own zone. 3 2 still heads, less than four minutes left. Cutler turns it over. Walker gets to near him. Near him, skates towards the right circle. Near him, skates around Utah's net. Near him, near him. Cutler, uh, Metcalf doesn't know where the puck is. Grizzlies get it as Metcalf gets back to his feet. Pfizer clears it out. No icing as Utah is able to make a line change. 3 25 and counting left in the third. As Hedrick will bounce off the far boards. Goes to Franklin, who crosses center ice. Franklin skates towards the left circle. It gets around Tho. Franklin tried to chip it out in front, but couldn't reach. Justin Misiak. Puck goes back to Jordan Martell. Left wing pass to Wright. Wright's got eight game winning, winning goals this season. He'll toss it across to Richie. Richie gets pushed by Franklin. Martell behind the net gets held up. Richie will tap it off the near boards. He'll get it to Sure. Both guys play for the Wheat Kings. Tho shot save. Rebound. Idaho clears it out. Can be icing on eye to help as Cameron Wright is in the stillheads net. He gets pushed as now Haskin and goes to confront Cameron Wright. As he draws, going to be in the stillhead zone as Utah had some really good looks there. Phil had a good look from the high slot, but just couldn't get it past Dylan Wells. Well, Cameron Wright's got to be really smart here right now. You can't take a penalty here. The 2.49 to go. I mean, you don't want the Grizzlies to go on the penalty kill, but you certainly don't want to lose one of your best scorers. I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get someone from Idaho to lose their cool. Haskin and just kind of threw Cameron Wright into the into the Stillhead's net. I think he's trying to get someone from Idaho to lose their cool so Utah can get a power play. I agree, Tyson, and I think that's exactly what I was trying to do. But in a game like this where it seems like the officiating has been kind of wonky, <laughs> it all takes this one different perspective to see, oh, he's the instigator. I sent him to the box. Wright's going to take the drives up there with Martell and Richie. The defensive pairing is Luke Martin and Aaron Thill. We're skating five on five. Trent Miner's still in net for Utah. Idaho's taken 30 shots. Grizzlies have taken 26. Idaho's up by one. No one scored here so far in the third period. Utah wins the faceoff. Thill falls down. Wright throws to the corner. Misiak's over there first. Misiak trying to box it up right. Now right towards the far goal line. Loses it. Misiak will carry it out of the zone. Misiak crosses center ice. He'll get it to Franklin. Franklin on the right side, skates towards the corner. Franklin around the net, he loses the puck. As the puck is behind Utah's net, Richie gets it. As Richie over to Tho, he's on the far side. 2.22 left in the third. Over to Martin. Martin crosses center ice, and he'll chip it ahead to the rooster. And plants off his stick and flies deeper in the stillhead zone. Goes back over to the rooster. He'll get it around towards Cutler, who's trying to reach it. Now Luke Martin gets it back up top for Penner. Penner to the left side. He'll take a shot. It goes wide as Johnson gets dragged down. Miner still aren't make, make that Metcalf is still in there. As it goes over to Penner. He centers the throw. Glanced off his skate. As it goes to Casey Johnson. Back towards Kawaguchi. He'll tap it off the glass. Murphy gets it in the right side. He's got a breakaway. Murphy skates up. Take a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Puck still in play. 143 left in the third. Brandon Cutler zooms the pass out to Pfizer. It goes past him. Wells wants icing, and the linesman agrees. 137 left in the third. Draw's going to come back in the Grizzlies zone. What a game-saving save by Garrett Metcalf on the breakaway. I mean, really, that keeps the Grizzlies in this thing with a minute 37 to go. Next question is, is once the Grizzlies get possession, uh, could we see Metcalf leave the leave the room for uh, the extra skater? I think once the Grizzlies enter the attack zone, I think Metcalf would come off. Is Ryan Kanasiewicz going to use this timeout right now? Martin exits as Sure replaces him. He's got the board out. Grizzlies tried to sneak a six skater in there. Penner enters and Sure leaves. Now the Grizzlies have four forwards on the ice, it looks like. Maybe five. As the draw won by Ido. Shot saved by Metcalf. Well, out the draw, Ido had a good look from the left wing, and Metcalf made the save. Looks like the Grizzlies had five forwards on the ice there. 
Yeah, I mean, interesting, because remember, that was an icing call. So all the skaters that were there were supposed to stay on the ice. I don't remember exactly who was out there. But I think what the Grizzlies were trying to do was try and sneak a guy that wasn't on the ice previously and get him out there. Four forwards and one defenseman on the ice. Now Mayhew's out there. Three, uh, you know, Two defensemen are out there. Mayhew and Martin as Wright will take the draw against Jade Miller. 137 left in the third. Idaho leads 3-2. to two. As the draw, one by the Stillheads. Kubla will skate towards the left side. Fumbles the puck a little bit, but he keeps it. Now I'll move it ahead. Martin takes it away. He'll glide a left wing pass to Cutler. Cutler skates towards the left circle. He looks to center to right. Right gets the stick held up by Kubla. Pfizer over to Mayhew. Mayhew slot shot goes wide. As my Metcalf will come off. Idaho will get to center ice. Shade Miller will fire towards the left corner. As Metcalf is off the ice. 120 left in the third. Miller takes it away from Pfizer. He glides it towards the slot. Martin throws it back towards Pfizer. Now Martin gets it the far side. Utah's net is empty. Cameron Wright across the center ice. 108 left in regulation. Wright gets the center ice. Shot saved by Wells. Hedrick clears it out to center. Pfizer over to Martin. Grizzlies lost two games in Idaho by one goal. They're down by one now. Three to two. Pfizer around the wall. As Martel skates towards the right side. Martel's got a goal tonight. Up top for Martin. Across to Mayhew. Mayhew over to Pfizer. He loses the puck. Idaho fires towards the empty net. And they hit the post. They hit the post on the far side. No goal. And icing is called on the Stillheads. They glided towards the empty net. And they hit the goal, po goal post on the far side. Oh, boy. Game it's would be three to two. <laughs> I mean, earlier when I said that the Grizzlies might want to <laughs> position to make the nets wider after hitting two posts. Nope. No, I, I think they're fine with keeping it the way it is. I think Ryan Kanasovich has got the clipboard out, and he's going to use his one timeout. Grizzlies are going to glide slowly towards Kanasovich. Both clubs look pretty tired. Idaho was on a five hour bus ride this afternoon. Pretty much a show and go for them. They showed up about three hours before game time. Well, what do you think the Grizzlies could drop here? It looks like Mayhew's a threat to score. It looks like everybody the Grizzlies have on the ice is a threat to score. The biggest thing is to win the faceoff and then. But the drop of play for, you know, Martell has been red hot. Maybe you find Cameron Wright. What do you think? Well, that's the thing, Tyson. You've got so many great playmakers out there that any guy is a threat. So I think you just try and move the puck around to the point where if you can get anybody isolated to take that shot, you're comfortable with whoever it is rifling it towards the net. That guy's chugging a beer, but once again, he's got a can, so we can't tell if he finishes the beer or not. you got to get those bottles, that have their, those clear bottles. He's excited, but the fans aren't because they couldn't see him yeah, chug the beer. So sure, he got that. Start to finish. Mm. Could have just been water he was drinking. Who knows? Forty point four seconds left in the third. Big time game for the Grizzlies as they're battling for a playoff spot. Kansas City and Allen Wolf both won tonight. Tulsa will be in for three games next week. Two fans are hoping they can get seen on the video board, but does look, looks like they're going to have to wait. Cutler will take the draw against Jade Miller on the near side. Linesman Andrew Collins will drop the puck. And it's dropped. Puck goes towards the near boards. Idaho gets it. Jade Miller throws to the corner. Now Cutler to the left side. Skates around the net. He drops it off for Martell. Now it's the left side for Martin. Martin across to Mayhew. He's the right side. Over to Cutler. Back to Fines. One timer. And it's blocked by Kubla. 25 seconds left in the third. What a play by Kudla. What a block. He just sacrificed his body on that racket over on the right side. And the Grizzlies just worked the puck around. Does a really good job of moving the puck and find Pfizer in the far circle. He just rips it towards the net. If Kudla doesn't block that shot, he might be destined to go in. 25 seconds left. Right, Cutler, Marcel, Pfizer, Mayhew, and Martin. Taking the draw as Ty Pelton buys for Idaho. Watch out for Zach Walker, a good two-way forward. He's on the ice. Haskin in as well. Kamaguchi, Casey Johnson. High drama here at Maverick Center. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Cutler trying to get it to Mayhew, but Mayhew couldn't reach it. Puck exits the zone. 20 seconds left. Mayhew over to Martin. Blue line to blue line, pass to Martell. He'll dump it to the corner. Johnson battles with Wright. 12 seconds left. 
Battle in the corner. Time's running out on the Grizzlies. Utah gets over to Martin, left side. Martin with a shot, and it's blocked. Idaho gets it. Casey Johnson fires towards the empty net, and it's wide, and that will do it. This baby's in the refrigerator as Idaho completes a three-game sweep as they get a 3-2 to two victory as everybody goes to congratulate Dylan Wells in a frustrating loss by the Grizzlies who lose all three games in this series by one goal. 3-2 to two in overtime on Wednesday, 2-1 to one last night and this evening. Another 3-2 to two final as neither team scored in the third period. The game winner was scored by Ryan Domowski. 12:41 into the third. Both teams used so much energy as the Stillheads congratulate and thank the fans, the Stillhead fans. They're behind the Idaho bench as the Stillheads pick up their 56th win of the season. They tie a league record for wins in a single regular season that was previously set by the Louisiana Ice Gators in the 2001-02 season. The Grizzlies will salute their great fans here at Maverick Center. It was an outstanding Saturday night crowd, but ultimately it just came down to the Grizzlies needing that tying goal, and they needed that tying goal the entire third period. And they just couldn't get one past Idaho goaltender Dylan Wells. Tough loss, and the Grizzlies have three more left here against Tulsa next week. Grizzlies are going to need to win at least two of those games to give themselves a chance at the playoffs. I agree, Tyson. I mean, it's going to be... Um, the biggest stage against the Tulsa Oilers is going to be a huge series. Grizzlies should win those games, and they need to win those games. But here tonight, I saw a team that really laid it all out on the line. I think this Grizzlies team gave it everything they got. And, uh, you know, it's it really could have gone either way. I yeah. mean, just I, I mean, Grizzlies hit two posts in this game. And you're just a couple inches, and it goes the Grizzlies' way. Tough way to lose. Tip your hat to Everett Sheen, the Idaho head coach, and that's an amazing team the still had to have. They're certainly going to be a favorite to win the Kelly Cup this season. They, you know, we saw Cincinnati a couple weeks ago. I think Idaho is a better team than Cincinnati as the Steelheads are going to go to the Kelly Cup playoffs as the favorites to be the champions. They pick up their 56th win this season, and their 115th standing point of the year. Good crowds walking home, most of them with their heads down. It was a very entertaining and exciting game. But the Grizzlies just couldn't get that tying goal past Dylan Wells. Final score from Maverick Center. The Idaho still heads three and the Utah Grizzlies two. Post game show starts in 30 seconds on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Final score from Maverick Center, Idaho 3, Utah 2. Nobody scored in the third period. Justin Ducharme got Idaho on the board. He scored 104 into the contest. Owen Hedrick and Patrick Cudlow with the assist. Grizzlies scored twice in the first period. Dylan Fitz, 5-16 in, got his 17th of the year with Keaton Jamison getting the assist. Jordan Martell gave Utah a 2-1 lead, 6-43 in. It's his 17th of the year, and Martell now has a goal in seven straight games. Nolan Ritchie picked up his first professional point as Martell scored 643 in. It was a five-on-five -five goal. Neither team scored on the power play tonight. Utah led 2-1 to one after 20 minutes of play. It's the second straight loss for the Grizzlies when leading after one period. The Grizzlies previously had been outstanding with a 13-2 and two record when leading after one. No one, uh, the second period, Jade Miller redirected an Owen Hedrick shot as Hedrick fired away from the right point. Miller redirected it for his 14th of the year, and the time of that goal was 9.58 into the second period. Hedrick and Mesiak with the assist as Hedrick ended the, the night with two assists. And then the game winner, as we mentioned before, was scored by Ryan Domowski, who picked up his team leading 29th goal of the season. Nick Kanadi and Demetrius Kumansis with the assist, and that was the last goal in the game. We didn't have a single power play. In the third period, there was not a single penalty called in the third. Both teams went 0 for 2 on the power play. Idaho outshot Utah 32 to 28. So the Grizzlies really held strong in the shot count, which was pretty even throughout the contest. Utah pulled Trent Miner late, or pulled Garrett Metcalf late. Metcalf making his first appearance since February 20th, and Miner was the backup tonight 
after starting the first two games in this series. And really, Utah did everything but tie the game. They hit two goal posts in the second period, one by Kyle Mayhew, who was looking for his first professional goal. And then later in the second period, Jordan Martell hit the post as he was looking for a second of the game. And in the third period, I think it was as much to do about Idaho really doing a great job in challenging everything that the Grizzlies were trying to do. I think if Utah plays just about any other team in the league with the effort they gave, I think Utah wins the hockey game. I think you just have to tip your hat to the Idaho Steelheads. 18th and final meeting between the clubs this season. Utah went 4-13-1 against Idaho this year. And obviously, geographic purposes are the reasons why Utah has to play a team like Idaho 18 times a year. But if you only play Idaho nine times, and instead you distribute the other nine games against teams like Rapid City or Kansas City, who Utah went 7-1 and one against this season, or Wichita, who Utah went 5-0 and oh against this season, we'd be looking at a different story heading into the final week of the regular season. But as we sit, Utah needs to win probably two or three games next week to secure a playoff spot. Here's the thing about this game here tonight, Tyson, that really fascinates me. I mean, if I walk into this arena and I don't know the record of the Steelheads and I don't know the record of the Grizzlies, if I just buy a ticket, sit down here in the arena, one, I was treated to a fantastic hockey game. Everybody, a, everybody, a everybody here, what a treat here tonight. Great game. But, I mean, if, if, if I'm just watching this game and someone comes up to me and says, hey, the Grizzlies coming into this game are 32-32, 4-0. They're dead even at 500 got 68 standing points the idaho steelheads coming to this game are 55 10 1 and 2 they have 113 standing points i would be bewildered by that I, because watching this game you would have i would have thought that these two teams were neck and neck in the standings with the way that the grizzlies have played the steelheads not just in this game but in this entire series yeah i really feel like the grizzlies brought their best hockey to this series and you look at every single game in this series has been decided by one goal wednesday night the overtime game friday night Steelheads win 2-1, and here today, 3-2 Steelheads win. So, um, you know, close games. You know, he said could have, should have, would have, but, I mean, the Grizzlies ultimately fall up short in all of these three games. But, man, I really have to tip my tap to the, the way that this team played here in this series. I mean, to just go up against the best team in the league. And like I said, the way that the Grizzlies played, I would have assumed, if I had no prior knowledge of this game, that the Grizzlies – we're one of the best teams in the league. I mean, just to go toe to toe with the Steelheads like that. I mean, the Grizzlies gave it everything they got. They got great goaltending, good defense, they're scoring. I mean, it's just ultimately at the end of the day, it's a game of inches. This is a game that the Grizzlies had their opportunities to win, but it's just sometimes, as you say, it is, it is what, it, what is. it is. Yeah, it's pretty much the story of the night. It is what it is. I mean, Utah looked like Ryan Canas, which this week made some really good moves. You know, obviously. He didn't really have much to do about the Luke Martin reassignment from Colorado of the AHL to the Grizzlies as he's got an AHL deal. Uh, but picking up Nolan Ritchie, who played two games, and you look pretty good. He got an assist tonight. It looks like Kyle Mayhew. It's kind of interesting to see Mayhew, who on Wednesday night in his pro debut, got thrown into the first shift of overtime. And then tonight, you think about two defensemen being on, on the ice. I mean, Ryan Kanaswich in a situation – late in regulation in the final minute where he's got to put his six best players on the ice with Utah's net empty. And he had Kyle Mayhew as one of those six guys. So that just tells you what the Grizzlies, and in particular at Ryan Kanas, which thinks of Kyle Mayhew earning that spot late in regulation. So that was a pretty good pickup. And it really looks like Mick Messner uh, can do some good things here during the Tulsa series as he did some good things uh, against Idaho. And it looks like he's a pretty good hustle player. And really it's not just this season. You think about potentially having those guys for next year. It's most of the time when you sign one of those guys, either from a junior league program or a college program, most of the time you end up bringing them back the next season. So it's not just this year. It looks like the Grizzlies could set themselves up pretty well for next season with those three guys. Yeah, Tyson, I mean, you think about the Grizzlies' Western Conference a final appearance last season, I think they're one of the reasons that the Grizzlies make it to the Western Conference Final is because of the additions that they made to that team, those late signings in the year, those guys fresh out of college. I think about Dakota Raby, Terran Pfizer, Johnny Walker. I mean, they just yep. added so much to an already stacked team that the Grizzlies, I mean, that, that, that infusion of youth really did wonders for that team, and I think that's one of the reasons why the Grizzlies went as far as they did. And I think the same thing applies here this season. Um, you know, you've got guys that you sign, and I really think all the youngsters here in this game, I mean, they, they, played, their, they, they played their hats off, really. I mean, yep. they played fantastic. I mean, Kyle Mayhew, 
I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about him. I, I thought he had a really solid game offensively and defensively. Uh, great pickup. And then Mesner also looks really good. I mean, he had a few shots on goal. I mean, it looks like Grizzlies at times were trying to isolate him to take that shot. I mean, he's not afraid to rip it. And then Nolan Ritchie man, was just dangling around. I mean, he was having a really solid game. Picks up his first point as a pro here tonight. But, I mean, I, I, I it's tough to lose these three games against the Steelheads. But I really like the way that this team is coming together. I really like the additions. And I think going into that series against Tulsa – I think the Grizzlies are clicking, and I think they're going to have a good series. All three of the games were decided by one goal. You know, it could have gone either way all three nights. And unfortunately, that's a big reason as to why the Stillheads have the record they have, is they won, they've won a lot of those games. They've pretty much won all of those games. And, you know, the Grizzlies have traditionally played well in one-goal games. I mean, you look at the Grizzlies' record in one-goal contests, it's pretty respectable. It's over the 500 mark. You know, with the loss tonight, the Grizzlies are 13-6-4. and four. In one goal game. So the basic win loss record is 13 and 10 in one in one goal games. So the Grizzlies really have played well in these type of situations. But just like a team like Idaho doesn't have 115 standings points by accident. They just seem to figure out how to win. But it sets up a really interesting week against the Tulsa Oilers. And the Grizzlies, you know, they lost tonight and they really didn't get any help from the scoreboard watching tonight. As Allen came away victorious against Savannah tonight. Final score five to three, and Kansas City defeated Tulsa six nothing. So Kansas City, you know, with their backs against the wall. I mean, they played good hockey tonight, and you know, for the Grizzlies, it's kind of what kind of Tulsa Oiler team are you going to face? Is it going to be the one that defeated Kansas City four to two last night, or is it going to be the one that lost six nothing this evening? I know if the Grizzlies put together the type of effort they did against Idaho, they do that, you know, they play against Tulsa with the way we saw you know, Tulsa in January, I think the Grizzlies can come away with three wins. I think that's going to be enough, and I even think that two wins could potentially be enough to get a playoff spot. Utah is now tied with Rapid City for fifth place in the Mountain Division. Both teams have identical 32, 33, and four records. Um, the Grizzlies and Rush are two points behind um, Wichita, or you know, there's a time for third. Wichita and Kansas City each have 70 points. Grizzlies and the Rush have 68. Um, Wichita's got two games left in the regular season. They're against Allen. One in Wichita, one at Allen, uh, the Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Kansas City has got, I think they've got three games left. They got Allen on Wednesday and then a two game set against first place Cincinnati in the Central Division. So that's a tough schedule for them. Wichita is pretty much going to need to win both games because uh, Wichita does not have the tiebreaker against Utah. It's regulation wins, and the Grizzlies have that tiebreaker. So Wichita pretty much needs to win both games. And for Utah, you win two out of three, and Wichita goes one and one. You win that tiebreaker. I think that's going to be enough. Grizzlies fans are going to have to root for the Stillheads next week as Idaho takes on Rapid City in a three-game series. It really doesn't matter what happens to Idaho from the Grizzlies' perspective. Idaho is going for the league record for the most wins in a single season. And it'll be interesting to see the storyline of Scott Burt, the Rapid City head coach. He's got his jersey retired in Idaho as he was a longtime Idaho stillhead. And so for the stillheads, they're going to have to knock out one of their own in order to, uh, um, you know, for the Grizzlies to really make get, get a playoff spot. You know, it's just – just kind of is what it is. Utah now has to think about Rapid City a little bit in that series against Idaho as Utah is tied with Rapid City with 68 points. And I think we're already counting Allen as being in. Um, they've got four games left in the regular season. They have 73 standings points. They play three different opponents. I got Allen in the playoffs. I probably even have them in the, as a two seed right now. And mm -hmm. you can almost put it in pen. Who's going to get those other two spots? It's going to come down to... You know, if Allen's already in, I don't think you mind them beating Wichita next weekend. Um, that means the Grizzlies really only need to win one or two games and uh, just hope that Idaho sweeps Rapid City or at least wins two out of three. I think two out of three is going to be enough for the Grizzlies next week, but you'd like to win all three of them and really leave no doubt. Yeah, I agree with that, Tyson, 100%. And uh, you just think about the playoff race right now, and you think about which, well, Wichita only has two games, and I think that's yeah. huge. And so they're going to play Allen – um, Wichita's at 70 points. So let's just say, worst case scenario, Wichita wins those two games against Allen and they end up with 74 points. Yeah. Uh, you look at the Grizzlies right now with 68. You would have to win those three games against Tulsa. 
Yeah. But assuming that Allen wins one game against Wichita, which I think is manageable considering what we've seen from the Americans this season and the way that they played here at Maverick Center. So, I mean, you, realistically, you say, okay, Allen has to pick up at least one win, right? And so if Allen does that, well, then you're right. The Grizzlies only need to win two because they own all the tiebreakers. But I think most importantly is the Kansas City Mavericks. Now, the yeah. Mavericks have three games remaining. Uh, what, they got Allen and two against uh, Cincinnati? Yeah, that's not mm, an easy those schedule. Are three really good teams. So, um, hmm. I think that in that scenario, worst case, Kansas City goes one and two. I mean, think realistically, they could go one and two. 72 points. Utah, I think, has a tiebreaker over Kansas City. So Utah wins two. They're tied with Kansas City. They win two, and they're okay. But, I mean, really what it comes down to, and we've been talking about it for weeks, is it's going to come down to this Tulsa Oilers series. Yep. I mean, we knew that was going to be the case. It's going to come down to the last day. It's going to be decision day. I think we knew that in February. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've been known this for months. I mean, you know, call us genies. We looked into our crystal ball like we knew. Okay, like we, un- we understood that this thing's going to come right down to the wire, and here we are. We got the Tulsa Oilers on Wednesday. They're going to ride into town for a three-game set. And you're right. We're not, we're not entirely sure what Tulsa Oiler team that we're going to see. I mean, are we going to see the team that beat the Mavericks? Or are we going to see the team that lost 6 nothing today? Well, it doesn't really matter because whatever Oilers team shows up, the Grizzlies have to be ready for it. Yep. And you're absolutely right when you said if the Grizzlies play the way that they did today against the Steelheads, they'll be just fine. I think the Grizzlies are catching fire right now. I mean, while I mean they didn't win any of these games, but I mean, they're playing like they're a hot team. And so... You just take that into the Oilers series, and I think the Grizzlies uh, will be just fine. Yeah, the effort certainly was there. Um, you know, you got to generate some more goals. I mean, five goals in the three games. I mean, it's just not going to – it just leaves no margin of error for your defensive unit, no matter how good your goaltender plays. And after he allowed the one early in the contest that Garrett Metcalf settled in and played a good game, but just, uh, just couldn't get that tying goal past uh, Dylan Wells in the third period. Let's get to the three stars of the game. Number three star is Dylan Wells, who stopped 26 of 28. The second star is Owen Hedrick, who had two assists and had two shots, also two penalty minutes. He's the second star, naturally. And the number one star is Ryan Domowski, who scored the game winner 16-41 into the second period. For the Grizzlies, Jordan Martell and Dylan Fitz each had goals. For Martell, it's the 17th of the season, and the same can be said for Dylan Fitz, as those two are tied for third. On the club, and for Jordan Martell, he now has a goal in seven straight games. And, you know, Keaton Jamison picked up an assist, you know, as a point in eight of his last nine games. And but for the Grizzlies, you're going to need those guys. And, you know, like we mentioned before, if you put together the effort like you did this week, I think it could be enough to uh, win the series against Tulsa next week. And I think it should be enough to clinch a playoff spot. Yeah, well, and you mentioned the Grizzlies – I mean, not really necessarily scoring a whole lot, but this is a Steelheads team that only allows about two goals against a game, and they average about four goals a game. For the, so for the Grizzlies to really <laughs> battle here in a low-scoring affair, I think that uh, speaks volumes to what the Grizzlies were able to do out on the ice. But uh, you know, the big thing is, is Grizzlies got one out of six standings points. <laughs> will that one point make the difference? I don't know, only it time might. will tell. But <laughs> it is what it is. And we'll see the Oilers next week. Yeah, that one standing point they got on Wednesday was huge because you think about being behind Rapid City in the standing, 67 points, and all of a sudden you got an odd number of points, and who knows what happens. You might definitely need to win the two games and maybe even all three uh, just to be sure. Well, that'll about wrap things up here for Maverick Center. Don't forget, we got a fun week of hockey uh, coming up at Maverick Center as the Tulsa Oilers will be in town for the only series of the season Utah won two out of three games in late January at BOK Center. And make sure to get your tickets at utahgrizzlies.com. Wednesday is going to be the final Bud Light College night of the regular season with discounted student tickets. Friday is going to be an AFSU Friday where tickets start just $8 when you pay using your AFSU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. And Saturday is Fan Appreciation Night as well as Star Wars Night. Two great promotions wrapped all up into one. The Grizzlies, that's going to be a huge game. You talk about a lot of spirit and energy. Grizzlies on Saturday night, seven days from now, will be battling for a postseason bid. You're going to want to see it. Get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com as the Grizzlies will be wearing the Star Wars specialty jerseys. I don't know where else I'd rather be next week than right here at Maverick Center watching live hockey as the Grizzlies battle for a playoff spot. Any final thought, thoughts, Sky? I'm thinking about being part of the Grizz Maniacs here next week. Oh, boy. I'm looking forward to it. I want this place to be packed. I mean, the th- fans here tonight were awesome. And yeah. all season long, Grizzlies fans have been great. But 
We said it. It's going to come down to these final games, and we need Grismania at full force. So, like he said, get your tickets. Come on down. Be a part of history and watch the Grizzlies hopefully clinch a playoff spot against the Tulsa Oilers. Should be a lot of fun. Next broadcast of Grizzlies hockey will be on Wednesday night. 6.50 pregame show, 7.10 face-off as they take on the Tulsa Oilers in the first of a three-game series. Get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com or by calling 801-988-8000. Well, that'll wrap things up once again in two hours and 46 minutes and in front of a crowd of 6,843. Ryan Domowski scored the game winner, 16-41 into the second period. Grizzlies got goals from Dylan Fitz and Jordan Martell as each picked up their 17th of the year. For Guy Carenza, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is.